Broadcasting live from the Dub Talk Studios, it's the annual W Awards. And now, your Master of Ceremony, Noah Clue. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys, thank you so much, thank you. Yes, thank, hey, thank you, thank you, yes, thank you very much. No, 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 thank you, thank you. Greetings, and welcome, one and all, to the 2018 W Awards. Man, what a year 2018 has been for anime. Some people are calling 2018 the best year for anime. Yes, yes, the best year since last year. And uh, they'll probably be saying the same thing again next year as well. Here at Dub Talk, we are excited to highlight the very best of English voice acting that came out in 2018. So keep an eye out for a few surprises for some series that'll remind you, oh shoot, I've really been meaning to see that series for three years now. So in a second, I will pass things over to our OG hosts who have volunteered to take over for the night so that the rest of the podcast can go out partying with the voice actors all night. Woohoo! But before that, as we always do, a brief disclaimer for the podcast to come. Warning, the following award show may contain language and content that may not be suitable for younger audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Also, there is an absolute guarantee that spoilers will be present for any and all series that are discussed. So if something that we're starting to talk about is something you haven't finished yet and you don't want to be spoiled for it, be prepared to skip ahead, just to be on the safe side. And lastly, the views and opinions expressed by our hosts and our voters are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect Dub Talk as a whole. Thank you all so much for your continued support, your views, and your votes that help make this annual event so much fun to host. And now, without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for, please welcome to the stage Lilac, Megan, and Spaceman Hardy! W Awards, the only award show where a bunch of nerds with nothing to do on New Year's Eve gather and just be nerds for a long period of time. At least that's the short version. Uh, the long version is the W Awards, our Dub Talks annual award show where our hosts give out awards in various categories for what we feel is the best in English dub anime and what it has to offer. My name is Stephanie and I am joined by my fellow OG hosts, Megan and Hardy. Howdy. Hi, my appearance here is sponsored by Devil May Cry 5 featuring Dante. <laughs> and Knuckles. God damn it. <laughs> now featuring new funky mode. I'm sorry. I feel like this needs to be said as well. <laughs> because there's someone else here currently in my apartment. <laughs> He's currently oh my god, is it gritty? <laughs> <laughs> Have you finally <laughs> accepted him into your heart? No! It is I, your lord and savior, Gritty, all bow down to me. <laughs> wow, Gritty up. sounds twinkier than I thought. <laughs> I want you to know I was trying my best to stay hidden until I was introduced, but the the freaking Devil May Cry thing almost had me dying. So Andrew's here because he's visiting me for New Year's, so we're like, we're gonna make him the surrogate, I guess, for all the other hosts. Uh, yeah, he's uh, visiting for New Year's. Wink, wink. I'm gonna fucking kill you both. God damn it. Remember, everybody, the dummies are not the Oscars. Besides that, we're way too tall for those. <laughs> um, it's the Golden Globes, which means I'm drinking. Good for you. I'm going to sit here and watch this train wreck just go. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, welcome to the W Awards, where we're going to be giving out a bunch of awards and stuff um, in, a bun in a variety of categories. Some, fa some wonderful favorites of ours uh, and some new ones. But uh, this is the <laughs> one sponsored by Dante from Devil May Cry. Stop it. But, um, are we ready just to dive right in? Uh, for one thing, we should mention that we lost a couple of awards since, uh, from last year. And added some. And added some, too. We have some old favorites. We also got some new ones. And, yeah, side note, there's no such thing as a worst category anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Although I think if there we did still have one, we would have all consented that it's yeah, it's pretty much the first dub of Ico Incarnation that even I Netflix haven't... hated so much. It's Net been found dead in Miami. Yep. Like Nico. It has actually been found dead, dead in Miami. Miami. <laughs> like Nico Yazawa. <laughs> God damn it. Here we go. Thank again. you, Mike Tool. <laughs> you are a good sir. Anyway, so I think, yeah, we wanted to make it fully a positive experience <laughs> this good time. Lord, this I've year. already gone through We hope it does good off. for you as it is for us. Giggity. <laughs> All right. Damn it. <laughs> Why did you have to say that? going to be another edition of dunking on Steph and Andrew today. Great. Dubby's edition. <laughs> Dubby um, Netta, the world where a dirty joke will constantly happen. Oh, Lord almighty. All right, we're going <laughs> to... Because we're all 12 year olds. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is true. All right. So going into our first category of the evening, we have the underrated performance award. This category is for performances in English dubs that we felt kind of just flew under the radar for for actors in certain series. Um, I didn't even establish some kind of order. Shit. I vote Hardy goes first because every year you make me go first. All right, then Hardy's going first. Don't. Oh, okay. If I were. <laughs> All right. Surprise. So I went really outside the box for my two choices. Uh, um, okay. Starting with my silver award. There goes... There has to be something special said for... When dubbed, when music has to be dubbed in English for anime, mm-hmm. it's a very complicated process, and some people are obsessed to the point of it to where it can get aggravating. But still, it is something that whenever it needs to be done, it needs to be done well. And so, a lot of times, dub songs just don't sound as good as they do in English. And so, when they do sound good, it it. it it needs to be brought attention to. It really stands out. And so, this actor is all that they did for their particular show. Um, and not only did they handle the dub singing, they had to sing it in death metal. I know where this is going. Oh, yeah. So, for my silver award for his talents, and in the uh, dub song community, I'm giving it to Jameson Boaz for Agretzko. Nice. Because this is a guy who is, he actually is an established musician outside of uh, doing anime dubs and stuff like that. He has his own band. He has his own SoundCloud. He does a fantastic cover of Typo Negative's Love You to Death, if you have a chance to listen to that. That is amazing. But yeah, just the ferocity and the just rage and, and the... Um, the emotion that he had to put yeah, into piece singing. Of shit. Yeah, you're a shitty boss. <laughs> Just like, like even my mom has watched Agretzko, and she would literally do the "you're a shitty boss" thing all the time. Like yeah. right after she watched it. Yes. And so yeah, I mean, dub singing is difficult in general, but imagine dubbed screaming. And he does not hold anything back, and it just it sounds great, and it really makes a huge a different a huge addition to the show that others might not oh, tend to overlook. Um, because we have the actress who plays a Gretzko uh, normally, and then we have a complete um, 180 in Jameson Boaz, who who plays a Gretzko like completely like full male death metal screaming voice, and it really adds a lot to the show in general. But for my gold award, one thing we just have to admit, and it's been this way for the longest time, is that the vast majority of anime characters are Asian people being vo- voiced by white folks. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's just Mm -hmm. how it is. It's been that way. It'll probably continue to be that way. And so when you have someone like a person of color or a, um, a person who belongs to a different nationality, when you can match up the actor to the character, it really makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that's just going for race. Here's another thing that you might not think about. What if the character has a disability? I see where this is going. And so to best match the tone of the character to bring out the best performance possible, do you go and find an actor with the same disability so that it meshes well, so it makes the performance more real? Would you go so far to actually cast a deaf actress as a deaf character? 
I don't think this has ever been done before. But mm-hmm. kudos to the directing, to the to the staff behind a silent voice for actually getting Lexi Cowden, who is a deaf actress, to voice a deaf character in the movie. Because it makes it so much of a difference. It is so authentic. And I think I said this during my review for the movie, is that it doesn't sound good, and that's entirely the point. Because she is, she sounds like a deaf person because she is a deaf person. And... I think it sound the the end result was incredible, and you have to realize that it, it's kind of sombering when you when you realize that Lexi will never get to hear her own work. Yeah, yeah, it's it, 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 and I don't think she'll ever, sadly, ever get this chance again because this is like a once in a lifetime sort of deal. You don't see a lot of deaf characters in anime, and for the most part, they're usually either voiced by people who normal who have. Who, who can hear, or they're just completely silent anyways. And so, yeah, I think I cannot speak more highly for this role. It's definitely underrated because it's going a step that you normally wouldn't go. And it's I appreciate the extra effort to actually represent a deaf character with a deaf actress. I think it makes huge difference. And that's... Absolutely. Yeah. So that's who I have. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Megan. Well, I'm not going to be as thoughtful as Hardy just was, so I apologize. <laughs> Whoops. We're on a roll um, tonight, guys. Da, if da, I da, might da. mention something quickly, mm. since it was since uh, something Hardy brought up, silent voice counts for this year. Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot, because we said, we we for those who may not have heard from the Dubbies last year, so the, the thank you for bringing that up. So the decision was made last year because it did not per, the dub did not premiere in the United States and we would hold off on it on and on letting it qualify for W awards, but it came out in the states this year. So that's why we're you're probably going to see a few silent voices in here. Yeah. Still yes. waiting on that real the Blu-ray release though. Yes. Same oh, with the Makoya so ones. Right stuff it. you assholes. I just want to watch the dub with a silent voice. I've only seen the Japanese and I'm so, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so to to not be as thoughtful as Hardy, um, you'll you'll notice a trend with a couple shows in here. Um, oh, but my silver award for underrated performance, and I I I say this because when I was aware that this dub was finally coming after what felt like ten thousand years, <laughs> I had a one set specific person to play this character in my mind. And it was like, if this isn't this person, I'm going to be so severely disappointed and nothing will make it better. And I'm going to hate it. And then I heard this character and I'm like, oh my God, you're better than I, you're, you're better. Like, it's one of those moments where like, you think you know what you want and you think you're so smart and you are as good and as smart as a casting director, but deep down you're not. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um... So my silver award for underrated performance, and he almost got my gold, had I not been really dumb one night and decided to do something very emotionally stupid. Oh, God. Is Nicholas Roy as Chuya Nakahara in Bungo Stray Dogs. Because I loved every second that this motherfucker was on screen. He made me appreciate this character more than I did because this man can pull off overworked and underpaid so he's well really, he's, he's so done with your bullshit he is so done with Dazai's bullshit <laughs> and i think the thing that really submitted it for me is if you've never watched the show and there's a spoiler alert on this video anyway is if you've never watched season two there's a part where uh Daza and chuya are basically forced to team up to take out cthulhu <laughs> <laughs> yep because yes, Cthulhu lives in Boon Ghost Stray Dogs. He'd return to his people by the end of season two. Just where are you going, Lovecraft? Back home. My okay. people need me. I must go. He literally Bye-bye. just walks. You know, he just he literally did. like walks back into the water. And, like <laughs> no one questions it. He just goes. I appreciate how even in the world of Boon Ghost Stray a Dogs, the concept of Cthulhu is still a fucking enigma. <laughs> But you can take him out with anti-grav powers. But you can take him out with anti-grav powers. Which, Chuya doing all the screaming and the crazy shit was great too. Um, But there's a line where 
Nicholas Roy has to deliver with, like, the spite of a man who hasn't been able to tell somebody to fuck off for, like, four years. Where he's like, you know the day you left what I did? I opened up a bottle of 79 and drank. <laughs> and I was like, I love this performance. I love you, Nicholas Roy. And from what Jet tells me, uh, Jet was also apparently really close to also putting him. Really? Because this guy had not done an adult character to his mind, to apparently to Jet. Like, he had done a okay. lot of little boys. But Good, good. Let's see him in his war adults. But I can't wait for the movie, because the movie can literally just be described as Chuya Nakahara saves the day. Um, to it. But my number one underrated performance was a tie in my heart between Ooh, two that. actresses from the same show. And I originally had one down, but when I sat and I thought about it, I had to go with- My head said, go with this actress, but my heart said go with the one that I picked. My underrated performance is for Shelley Colleen Black in Made in Abyss. Ooh, okay. As oh, really? As the narrator and as Rico's mom. And I was so very close to putting Christine Otten as Ozen. Because they are both fantastic off of each other. But a lot of people don't understand that a narrator character needs to breathe life into the show as well. Mm -hmm. And that the narrator for Maiden Abyss is in fact Rico's missing mother. And she is also herself a character. Mm. Um, I can't remember the character's name off the top of my head right now and I feel bad. Um, but... Shelly just brings so much spunk and life and just she's so soothing to listen to in a show where two children are just traveling up down Cthulhu's butthole. <laughs> um, Uncle Lovecraft's happy time murder hole. <laughs> oh, that's Uncle exactly Lovecraft. What <laughs> that's where Steinbeck went. That's where uh, that's where Lovecraft went back to the abyss. Um, oh, the end of Bungo season two is just him swimming back to the abyss like, hey, guys, I'm home. Um, Hi guys, how you doing? Hey, hey guys. Okay, bye. My boyfriend Steinbeck didn't come with me. Um, <laughs> I learned that was because those two are attached to the fucking hip. Good hip. Great. Man, you think Steinbeck's into tentacle hentai in that show? Um, <laughs> yes, but, just... but that's aside the point. <laughs> I feel really bad that I can't remember the mom's name. <laughs> Liza. In the pit. Liza. I have a computer yep. in front of me. We're good. Thank you. But her performance as Liza in the narrator is just so beautiful and soothing. And despite not being a large presence in the show as compared to, say, Rico, Reg, um, or any of the other characters, I think that she was fantastic. And I think that it's a performance that will be uh, unfortunately overlooked by a lot of people because she is not... While she is a large presence in the show, she is not a large herd presence. So, so my two... Because Andrew was mean and made me actually pick a silver and a gold winner. <laughs> Thanks. Look, if they were going to do it, it was only fair you did too. Because I never told them to. We've, sorry, we've had this argument. Um, okay. Get a room, you two. <laughs> what do you? Th where do you think we are? So, my, my silver award goes to an actor. I absolutely adore his work. We've all seen me give praises to this individual. Now, there's something to be said when in a single season you basically play the same goddamn stereotype <laughs> in two different shows. But I did have to pick one. And I'm actually going to give my underrated performance, one of my underrated performance awards, to Adam Gibbs for Tokyo Ghoul Re. Ah. So... <laughs> okay, they even look like each other. That's what's even better about it. Yes. The other show in question that he played a very similar character to was Daza. Uh, not Daza. Wow. Daza? Anzai. Anzai from Devil's Light. I was mixing the two together. That's the problem. So, really, I only wanted to give Adam this because he had to play the same kind of character in two different shows that season, and he pulled it off fantastically. And... If you heard me on both these episodes when we covered Devil's Line and Tokyo Ghoul Re, you know that Adam's a very, very fantastic actor because each of these characters has a different kind of switch that they go through, or different, like, complexity and story that they go through. Um, 
and he just plays the plays both of them very well. And in Uriye's case, Uriye is my favorite character in Tokyo Ghoul, honestly. He's very self-centered, but from what I'm seeing from season two, he's actually like giving a shit <laughs> about people. But still, he's unlike the Perot staff. I know. Right? Oh. <laughs> oh. But um. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> what did we, Andrew? What did we say about Perot? Borjo's their favorite child. Black Clover's the child they ignore in the corner. Tokyo Ghoul Re is sticking a crayon up on its nose. Crayon up its nose. It's, it's basically like the child that's eating glue and <laughs> sticking crayons up his nose as Perro's taking pictures like, you're doing amazing, sweetie. And then what about Yona? Yona's, Yona's the, the daughter that they... that they'll never have again. Yona's the daughter that they left at the orphanage. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sad. Damn it. Um, but yeah, anyway, Adam, I had to give my silver award. Now for my gold award... There is something to be said about a motherfucker who just wants to tell someone off in the best way possible by drinking wine on the day they fucking left. I'm going with Nicholas Roy yes! from The Stray Dog. Yes! My hoe! <laughs> no, I mean, like, from the second I heard it and, like, seeing Nicholas Roy uh, just yes! go for, like, a half an hour, it was just... It was a performance that absolutely flew under the radar that's one that you don't expect so i'm just like i was floored and considering some of the other contenders i had for this award like in nicholas's case seeing him as one of the very very early contenders still stick in my head like that says a lot it's it's de his performance absolutely love it as chuya um and if you haven't seen mungo stray dogs you really need to see it because it's fantastic so uh, I believe we have several other hosts. What do we have, sir, for our other hosts? What do they pick for underrated performance? Alrighty. For the underrated performance award, Noah Clue gave his to Margaret McDonald for Citrus, to saying she is the true best girl. Uh, for Jet's underrated performance award, he went with Jalen K. Cassell for his role in Stardust Crusaders, Battle in Egypt, and says the following. There were a lot of really fun and high-energy performances in the second half of Stardust Crusaders, but out of all of them, Jalen as Vanilla Ice left one of the biggest impressions on me. For what was effectively a last-minute antagonist meant to raise the stakes for the final battle, Jalen really went at this full force and managed to make the character sound downright terrifying. There was so much terror and intensity in his performance that honestly left me with chills. They didn't think too much of this character they watched in Japanese. Jalen's take really helped to give him a much more lasting impression. Sorry, I have to stop you for a second. Vanilla Ice is a villain? Yes. Welcome to JoJo's, JoJo's. Bizarre Adventure. I am still on the first half of Stardust Crusaders. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Ice, ice, baby. Too Four. cold. <laughs> mm, that is cold. For Roots of Justice's Underrated Performance Award, he gave it to Xanthi Wynn for Dragon Pilot, Hisone, and Masatan, and says the following. There's a lot under the hood of Mayumi Hitomi and Xanthi's dub performance. Of the players that do a spectacular job in the dub, I feel like she's kind of unsung as a moral backbone for the show. She's not afraid to make attempts for the things she wants, but at the same time, she worries about what others think about her because in her own words, people are intimidated when big girls get angry. Xanthi gives her a gentle warmth and it's one of my favorite performances of the show. That For... girl likes him thick with a double C. Damn <laughs> right. For Gigi's underrated performance award, she gives it to Sarah Ann Williams for Kakegurui and says the following. I can't even say anything coherent about why this performance was so perfect, other than that it was utterly the most outstanding performance of a train wreck character I've ever seen, and she steals the show. She got to that level of crazy that I wanted everybody to have in Kakegurui, and it just made me want to scream. It was so great. In fact, I did. Get it, girl, and take it to the bank! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gigi. God Thanks, bless. Thanks, Gigi. <laughs> and as for... Andrew, that's aka you. That's myself. You. That's you, you stupid. I was debating whether I wanted to do a third person or first person. As for my own personal award for underrated performance, I went with 
Jalen K. Cassell for JoJo Part 4. Diamond is Unbreakable has a lot of stellar performances, but Jalen as Okuyasu has grown on me much more than I expected him to. And he fills the dumb good boy with so much life, passion, and delicious spaghetti. <laughs> Stop eating it! <laughs> For the love of God, drop the meat is a thing that is said in that dub. And it's For the so love of God, drop the meat! <laughs> JoJo's is amazing. I only watched the one episode when it premiered when we were at Anime Fest, remember? All right. We Moving were on. all drunk as fuck. <laughs> Moving on. For Amon Duel's award for underrated performance, he went with Macy Ann Johnson for Magical Girl Raising Project. Pour one out for Hardcore Alice. She broke my heart again and again and again. For Jamal's award for underrated performance, he went with Caitlin Barr for Magical Girl Raising Project. Caitlin's La Pucelle is a tour de force not to be missed. She provides a wonderful balance between two versions of essentially the same character whom I have an admiration for. And for... Lack the Watchers Underrated Performance Award, he went with Don M. Bennett for Hanebado. All right, thank you. So, Underrated Performance Award, nice, holy shit, variety on that one, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so happy you went down with me for Nicholas Roy. Fuck yeah, I did, yeah. you kidding Yay! me? <laughs> we united in Bungo, damn it. Uh -huh. Side note, season three, the key, our visual came out today. I am so excited. I can't wait to watch Russian Ray Chase get punched in the face by two twinks. Oh my God, it'd be the greatest joke ever. <gasps> what happened? Well, I got double teamed by two teenagers. What? What? <laughs> anyway, time to move on to our next award. And uh, another classic staple here. Uh, for us here at Dub Talk. So we have the Voice Actor to Watch Award. This is for an actor who has probably more than impressed us in the past year, whether he is a, whether they he or she is a brand new voice actor, or maybe it's someone who's been flying under the radar for a while, um, but has really come more into their own in this past year. So Hardy, mm -hmm. would you like to go first with your award for voice actor to watch? I certainly would. Um, when this certain actor popped up, I had never heard of them before. They were just completely new, came out of nowhere. And it was for a show that I frankly thought they were wasted on, to be perfectly honest, because the show itself really, really sucked. But later on, he got cast as something much more recognizable, that something that he could actually be proud of. Let me just be the first to say it's thank heaven that Billy Kamitz got cast as Josuke because I do not want to talk about Sword Guy on this show. Ah, oh, yay! Someone <laughs> did it for us. I was, I was like, I, I want to put Billy Kamitz myself, but I'm pretty sure everyone's going to put Billy Kamitz. Not yeah. me! Is yep. it Kamitz or Kamets? I, I think Kamitz. it's Kamets. I'm not sure. But he was anyway. Aladdin once at Disney World. Oh, yeah. But anyways, nice. no, I, I've really been impressed with how he's been voicing Josuke, and even in Sword Guy, he was also really good. And it's nice to see that he's getting a lot of pretty high-profile roles right off the bat just this year. <laughs> For so. the love That's of good. God, drop the meat! <laughs> He's the one who again. gets to yell that. He's the one who gets to yell that, though. Yeah. Oh my God, that's awesome. And so, yeah, Billy's had a really great first year, and I hope that he keeps getting more roles as it goes on and and uh, look forward to him in, 19, in 2019. Because uh, he's also he's also one of the Okuyasu brothers, not the Okuyasu, but the uh, o Osamatsu. Osamatsu. Osamatsu brothers. He's the Osamatsu brother. Oh yeah. Apparently, we're not supposed to talk about that. Sorry. Okay, but uh, for <coughs> for my gold award, uh, I notice a lot of people giving this award to brand new actors, and this year I did something a bit different because this per this particular person has been around for a few years. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I think one of you, I think it might have been Megan, actually gave this person this very award back when it first came out. Really? Okay. Really, yeah. Um, what this person is particularly known for doing is they, they get typecast as idols a lot. 
I know who this is. Now, whether they're cute and ditzy, like in Love Live, uh, psychotic, like in Kakegurui, or outright uh, homicidal, like in Sword Guy, they always this person always brings the best to make them sound completely deranged and unhinged. But it's not an idol to where I am giving this actor this award. No, it wasn't until early this year when... I heard her as objectively best girl Lily Hoshino in Be the Beginning that Faye Mata really came up on my radar. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. I've given I, Faye, I gave Faye Mata my word for Raina's Love and Love Live. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what stands out for her performance in Be the Beginning is that she's not this crazy, unhinged idol. She's not this doofus. It's her. Lily is basically just her. Just doing the uh, doing the same thing that that Bryn April and 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 what's her name um, that she, Bryn April does with Monster Girl with Hikari. It's basically Faye Mata being Faye Mata on screen. I do not think you could have picked a better character, better actress to fit this particular character. And it it's really shame that a lot of people kind of passed out on or passed over be the beginning because. While half the show is kind of lackluster, the other half is really good. And one of the best things about it is Lily and Faye's performance as her. So, yeah, that was really what brought... I've noticed that 2018 has really brought more roles to Faye. And, because she's also Yumiko now in JoJo's, which is a pretty decent-sized role. Yeah. And so, yeah, I... I think she's always been there, but 2018 in particular has really been good to her. And I hope that we keep seeing her get more and more high profile roles. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, Megan, your so awards for, for voice actor of the week, please. So my silver award goes to um, an actress who, who was in a couple of other things. There were unfortunately shows I just did not watch on principle. Um, for various reasons. But I watched the show she debuted in. And uh, because of uh, other things, like the fan vote, I, I had completed the show. And then when I went back to get the, one of these clips uh, for the uh, Viewer's Choice Awards, uh, I got to hear a little bit more of her performance again. And then it clicked on me. Oh my god! How much did this person know in the booth about their character that I didn't know because I hadn't finished the show when I had did the episode for this because the, the, the dub for it wasn't out. My silver award goes to Megan McLean as Rachel in Angels of Death. Hmm. Ray is such a fust and Andrew's case frustrating, <laughs> but very fascinating character and... Angels of Death was a very interesting 16-episode ride where I learned you cannot kill Derek Snow. Not even if you try. <laughs> <laughs> He'll um, live on forever. Dr. Dr. Danny is Danny. a human fucking cockroach and you cannot convince me otherwise. No, you can't convince otherwise. Every time I thought he was dead, he just fucking came back. And I was really tempted to give Derek Snow the Golden Ham Award, but he did not. He <laughs> just missed out. Um... But that being said, Megan's performance as Rey, who is, I think, such a technically hard to pull off character because she is very monotone and dead inside, just like me during 2018. Um, but at the same time, when you, you finish Angels of Death as a show and you go back and like rewatch it, you realize, oh my god, she's actually been playing a little psychopath the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, like... It's actually, she's actually, and for that to be the first big role that she's ever had was, she was phenomenal in it. And I'm really sad because I believe one of the two other shows she's in this season are Ulysses and Goblin Slayer. Yep. Oh, God. And look, I, like, look, okay, at least Goblin Slayer isn't trying to make the Shonen Ghidorah a thing. Ulysses. I still um, can't believe that's a legit thing. Uh, I think Megan is going to be a force for the next couple of years at Funimation, very much in the same vein that Danny Chambers was last year as the voice actor to watch. But my gold medal is a, is a horse that came up 
at the very last minute to snatch Megan's gold medal away by a nose. Because if this year has taught us anything, it's been a really good year to have to dub over a Mamoru Miyano character. <laughs> Ooh. And Ooh. as I said on Zombieland Saga, and as I said on this show, I never want the dub actor to just 100% try to be Mamoru Miyano. I want them to be themselves, playing the same character that Mamoru has played. For his excellent performance in a show that he can hang his hat on, unlike uh, much in the same way that um, I believe Hardy brought up in his uh, Billy with Billy Kometz, my golden uh, my gold award for voice actor to watch is going to go to Mike Haimoto as Karu Ijuin in Tata Never Falls in Love. Right. Now, he is fantastic as this slightly narcissistic good-hearted bro of bros who whose idea of the stars is to take selfies of himself in front of the milky way he does such a good job as karu um i praised him a lot in the tata episode i think we all did but i cannot wait to hear more of mike in things at sentai filmworks uh, I hope that his talents get recognized elsewhere, like when Adam Gibbs and Blake Shepard and Bryson Vegas get to travel over to Funimation. I want to hear this this young man or old man, or I don't know how old he is, but I want to hear this guy and more stuff, and I, I can't wait to see what 2019 holds for Mike. So my two awards for voice actor to watch. Uh, both of these gentlemen actually have been around for at least for a few near, for a couple years now, uh, but I feel like this has been a good year for both of them. Uh, my silver award for voice actor to watch, uh, goes to a gentleman that, well, actually, here's the weird irony. Both of these gentlemen were actually in the same show at one point together. Um, but I do, at the end, like, two different roles and what made stood out to me. Uh, silver award, uh, because I wasn't sure about this gentleman i've heard good things about him but i never really heard about him or heard him in a show before and then i got to kakurio bed and breakfast for spirits <gasps> i think i know who it is and then i heard steven Fu is genji oh, and so cute. he was so adorable he was not only adorable but he was very very endearing and it was just such a charming performance um in of itself and even then like He's taken on a few different other roles as well throughout the year, one of which is um, Hakata Tonkatsu Ramens, where he's this basic, like, this kind of, like, not not, not, not neurotic, but, um, but this would-be assassin office worker kind of kid, and he's just, like, a scaredy cat, and it's just, he's grown a lot, I think, this year, so I wanted to give Stephen Fu some credit. Um, now, speaking of Hakata Tonkatsu Ramens, actually. And my gold winner for this. This gentleman was actually one of my contenders for the same award last year, but he lost. Oh. I have to give it to Kyle Ignacy's this year, though. Because he's his performance as this little, little snorky little hacker kid in Hakata Tonkatsu Ramens was just absolute gold to me. And... He popped up on occasion as well throughout the course of the year, and I just, at this point, I really just wanted to be, like, give him credit where credit is due, because I think he's really growing into his own. And motherfucker, I am so excited for Ubi Neko right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have no clue how excited I am to hear what he will do with Battler um, for the visual novel. But, um, yeah, like... At the end of the day, I feel like it's about time to give credit where credit is due, and I think Kyle Ignacy is just definitely someone to keep on your radar in terms of- You did good, Drunk Sword. <laughs> you did good, Drunk Sword. We you did you. good job, Drunk Shoda. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, you did good, Drunk Soda. Andrew, what do we have for our other hosts for voice actor to watch? Thank you, Steph. Uh, so- So formal. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to be. It's a shit show, Andrew. You don't have to be formal. All right. I'll, I'll keep to formalities regardless. <clears throat> okay. For Noah Clue's voice actor to watch, he put Koi Dao. Ooh. 
For his role in March Comes Like a Lion, I can tell that this kid is going places. For Jet's voice actor to watch, he gives it to Jason Marnocha and says the following. I was originally going to hand this one to Billy Kometz, but I've been just as impressed with what I've heard of Jason Marnocha's work ever since I heard him in JoJo, and he's had a pretty powerful voice. I'm extremely curious to see what he'll be capable of in the future, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of his work. For Roots of Justices, uh, voice actor to watch, he gave it to Christopher Lewin Ramirez and says the following. I have reasons to give this to Christopher, but I want to keep those a little closer to myself for the future. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, stay tuned. Ooh. It's the Radiant episode. <laughs> yeah, legit though. Chris was actually one of my early. He was also he was yeah he was also one of my runners. He was also he was very close runners. for uh, for uh, Asahi and Free. Yep. As for Gigi's voice actor to watch, she also picked Mike Haimoto. Mike Hi Mike's performance in this in the anime Tata Never Falls in Love was absolutely perfect. Kaoru was full of himself without being arrogant, extremely funny and entertaining, but also came with huge passion and heart and made me cry more willing than I want to admit. I really hope we hear more lead roles for him in the future because I'm sure as hell, because I'm sure he'll knock it out of the park. As for my own personal pick for my voice actor to watch award, I gave it to Kellen Goth and said that this man has been cast as a central antagonist for a future season of My Hero Academia. He's already on your radar, and you don't even know it yet. Stay tuned for October. Shit, the name of that character. Fuck, what's Overhaul. Overhaul. Thank you. I was like, it's that one, isn't it? <laughs> as for Amon Duel's voice actor to watch, this is a funny one. <laughs> this is my favorite thing in the entirety Yay! of the other guy. Amon Duel's voice actor to watch is Mike Tool for his role in Banania. I know he's only been in one show, but I think this man's going to be going places. <laughs> uh -oh, let him go, Chargeman Ken! Yes! Alright. Let Mike as, Tool be everybody in Chargeman Ken. As for Jamal, his voice actor to watch is Macy Ann Johnson. He says, Macy Ann's acting career is off to a strong start as she provides a unique charm and personality to Hardcore Alice in Magical Girl Raising Project. She's a good girl who did nothing wrong ever. I look forward to seeing her in future shows as a result. And Lack the Watcher's personal voice actor to watch is one Greg Chun. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the next award category is one of our favorites here at Dub Talk, or I should say get one of Hardy's personal Ooh, favorites yes. here at Dub Talk. We gotta get Time that to get special glaze ready now. Ooh. Get your fucking knives, boys and girls! Get, get, get your knives and forks. It's time to talk about some ham with our Golden Ham Award. Ooh. Are we going, like, full spiral Christmas or, like, luau this year? Ooh. Mm. What did we do last year? Did we do spiral Christmas last year? Well, spiral holiday or non-denominational. Well, it's Polynesian you know time. <laughs> yeah, I've got the spit roast. I've got the spit roast and the luau and, so, and the lays. Let's okay, carve so, into it. Okay, so basically, if if this is your first time listening to a W's, W Awards episode, um, <laughs> the Golden Hammer Award, we established this, what, last year, I think? Or the year before? And It was um, the year before. Yep. Yeah. And basically, it's for performances from actors and English dubs that are just mwah, oh so hammy and delicious oh, just mm. ooh just Chef's so kiss. much fun <laughs> drop um, the meat <laughs> Hardy can you go first with your golden ham award please if if I could I would actually like to go last for this one oh if, man you know what? all right Megan guess what you're going first motherfucker so my civil award goes to an actor that we are all very familiar with but, uh, he's not going to go for some Hawaiian ham. He's going to go for some Southern charm and goodness. Oh, boy. I had to give, I wanted to give him my gold. I really did. 
there's a special person who's getting the gold award. <laughs> uh, my silver medal is going to Phil Parsons' is fucking Kenny from Attack on Titan. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Holy yeah! shit! <laughs> Kenny don't even make it halfway through the season. That's great. But Jesus fucking Christ! Is everything out of his mouth absolute gold? <laughs> like, we used it in the clip for Attack on Titan other than the- And it's probably, like, anything out of Kenny's mouth other than when his story of, like, bitch slaps Aaron this can be a contender the world, for right? some of the best shit in this season. When he's like, I smell a rat in this establishment. Bang, bang! <laughs> like, like, it is so much fun in a show that is just so sad and awful. He, he's kind of like Anime Negan. He is Anime Negan! No! <laughs> Fuck, you're right! <laughs> which means that he too will be- Which means that he too will be downloadable content in Soul Calibur one day. God damn it! It's not Soul Calibur, you pleb! It's Tekken! Tekken! Close enough! No, it's not! <laughs> babe, babe, I've stop. offended Andrew. Fine. So he'll be a downloadable character in Tekken one day. Oh my God. Um... Or he might be Smash DLC. We never know. Um, <laughs> I mean, we got Joker Smash DLC. Like, look, as long as Kenny makes it in before Goku, my life will be valid. <laughs> but, and I'm so tempted. Like, I feel bad giving this guy Golden Ham because the performance is actually very nuanced and very good. But there is something to be said for a man who gets to yell, "Fight me, you little necrophiliac!" What? <laughs> <laughs> and that is Zealous fucking Reed as Zack and Angel. Yes! Ah. <laughs> that is a legitimate line that he gets to yell at Brie Karbowski. Yes! He also says, fight me, coconut head. He gets to say fuck, unlike Ryuji. Um, he, like, at one point, he throws a piranha off himself. This man got put in an electric chair and had to scream his balls off. Yep. And then go record Black Clover. Oh. <laughs> And then lost his voice for a fucking week. Yes. But no, Dallas's performance as Zack is, as, for as deep and emotionally complex as it is, it is also absolutely hamtastic. Hi, Jade Saxon. Um, I'm opening beans, because I'm drunk. Um, Jesus Christ. But, I'm coherent, though. Uh, but I loved Dallas's ham- Like, Dallas and Phil were, were just so good this year as hamtastic- Negan and the Screamer. Negan and the Screamer. Uh, coming this fall to NBC. Oh my god. Steph, go ahead. Alright. So, my two Golden Ham Awards. They are probably among the most obvious ones of the year. Mm. Because both of them are bombastic and batshit. And it's probably the most fun you will ever see these two gentlemen play in these two shows. My Silver Award goes to a gentleman who also had to portray a Mom Romiano role this year. Yeah. Oh, hey, KG. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not KG. Um, he also had to deal with the shit known as little zombie idols. Ah! Oh, God, that was the girliest scream I've ever made in my life. <laughs> Good Lord, that sounded fake. So... For his role in Zombie Land Saga, my silver award for Golden Ham, I'm I, there's no question I have to give it to Rico Fajardo. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> dear God, like Rico just has so much fun with this role. Like he's going crazy with like, like yelling and just every little bit of nuance in this character that Mama Miato threw into. I think Rico is matching it and then some. Mm -hmm. It is. It, but it's also his own take on the character too, which is the best part. Um, so I have to give my silver award for him to that for that one. Um, my gold award. Oh God! So the instant I saw this gentleman voice this character, cursing up and down, threatening to kill a bitch, and all the while laughing maniacally like a madman. Dallas Reed for Angels of Death locked in my gold medal instantly. Yeah, baby! Like, basically for the same reasons that Megan has given, but with the complexity that the character was, you just can't help but fall in love with the psychotic insanity that is Zack. <laughs> 
Yeah, Zach is the best boy. Like, mm-hmm. no questions asked. But, he has a um, charred cinnamon roll to burnt for this earth, literally. Pretty much. But yeah, I No, like literally no someone set him, him on fire. For every aspect of that performance, even to the point where Dallas did lose his voice for like a week or something like that, very early on, like, kudos to you. You gave it your all. Like, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing of a performance, and I had to give credit to to him and give him my gold award for Golden Ham. Hardy. I've been sitting on this one for the better part of an entire year. So, oh, oh my, my God. God. Are we sh- strap yourselves in, kitties? We're about to be surprised. Yes. Uncle Hardy gonna carve up that ham nice and good. Right, ah! right, right. And if you're not good, he'll kneecap you like Negan. I I had to... I, I don't typically like making special exceptions, but I read the rules thoroughly, very closely, uh-huh. and I believe I'm staying within the rules. Because there is no rule that states that both of the choices that you pick cannot be from the same show. This is true. Yes. Ooh, okay, yep. You have me on that one, actually. And this is very important for these two Mm. because they work as a team. And you cannot have one without the other. Uh, They they have to to complement each other every single time. And especially because they are the only consistent cast members in this particular show. Now, here's the thing. Um... And this particular show is so off the wall that every week these two men had to go in and try to stare at what is the anime equivalent of a fever dream and not only try to (laughs) make sense of it, but also they were tasked with making it entertaining, funny, and well acted. And so for my Golden Ham Award, I do not have a gold and silver. I have a duo my Golden Ham Award goes to Chris Sabat and Ian Sinclair as Bob Epic Team. Because if nothing okay. else, they took what was the arguably the oddest segment of an already odd show and made it probably the most in- entertaining part of the entire experience. Oh I can't believe God. Hardy was thinking about Hellshake Yano all year. We're still thinking about <laughs> Hellshake Yano. Yano. Yeah. I'm thinking about Hellshake Yano right now. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. God. I was like, wait, Ooh, where is he going with this? I'm sitting I here. I knew where he was doing. going with it. That's why I started doing the thing that I hate that he does. Oh, I was staring me, at him. Me, I, was, me. I was staring at Andrew. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is he talking me, about? Me, Andrew's like, don't oh. worry. Hold on. Hold on. I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> All right. Hardy had a shivering with and Tissa. Patient. Damn it. <laughs> All right. So now that Next we have that the way, Andrew, how about the other hosts for the Golden Ham Award? What have they selected this year? All righty. For uh, Noah Clue's Golden Ham Award, he has selected David Wald for Mr. Tonegawa Middle Management Blues and says the following. I'm pretty sure they just tossed David into the booth to improvise all his over-the-top narration, and God bless this beautiful man for making even the simplest lines goofy good fun. For Jet's Golden Ham Award, he has picked David Wald for Mr. Tonegawa Middle Management Blues, and says the following, I'm not sure there was anybody else having as much fun behind the booth this year as David Wald was narrating this show, and he went above and beyond in that department, hamming things up at pretty much every opportunity while never breaking the spirit of the show. It was a toss ton of fun to listen to and helped make this dub a more memorable experience. For Roots of Justice's Golden Ham Award, he has selected... David Wald from <laughs> Mr. Tonegawa Middle Management Blues. There's so much love for David Wald today. And he says He is our gay overlord. Yes. <laughs> Any show that lets David Wald go nuts and be over the top is a wonderful treat. Bouncing between rapturous shouting at every little thing to constant impressions, Mr. Tonegawa's narrator was a role that almost seemed created for David Wald to play. For Gigi, Gigi's pick for the Golden Ham Award is one Ian Sinclair 
for Tata Never Falls in Love and says... It's a combo breaker! French <laughs> Ian Sinclair. Need I say anything else? Okay. French Prince <laughs> Ian Sinclair. If anybody needs me, I'll be over in the corner trying to whimper silently. <laughs> Gee, I love you. She can go cry in her Wookiee. Okay. For my personal Golden Ham Award, I picked Sarah Ann Williams for Kakegurui. And I say the following. She is literally getting off to the idea of being shot. This is goddamn madness incarnate, and Sarah is chewing the scenery every single second that she's on screen. Oh, Lord. As for Amon Duel, his Golden Ham Award is for God damn it. David Wald for Mr. Tonegawa's Middle Management Blues. I'm trying not to shoot alcohol out my nose. <laughs> Treat your family to the delicious taste of authentic Central. Texas ham, so says Amon Duel. In all caps. In all, in all caps. In all caps. I, I need to distinguish that they are, in fact, all caps. For Jamal, his pick for the Golden Ham Award is Michaela Krantz for Chio School Road. Michaela turns the ham up to 11, providing so much comedic energy. I've literally had to walk out of my room multiple times to catch my breath as I was laughing so hard. From mundane, everyday activities to stripper bowls and being posh, Michaela shows how versatile ham can really be. Dive headfirst straight into the garbage! <laughs> headfirst straight into the garbage. And, yeah. and nobody's for, behind me. And for Lack the Watchers Golden Ham Award, he chooses one Patrick Seitz for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders Battle in Egypt Arc. You thought it was going to be David Wald, but it was Dio! <laughs> <laughs> Dio finishing it up. Nice. Alright. Now I'm just imagining Dio stealing, like, a Christmas ham. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking would, too. Just Fuck you, Joestar family! This is my motherfucking ham now! Okay. The ham was Danny. <laughs> Jesus no, the ham was, uh, the ham was What's Her Nuts from part one. Oh my god. So moving on to our next award... We're actually going to be ta going through our first new award of the evening. Uh, Megan, I feel like it's appropriate for you to introduce this because you're the one who. I'm the one this. who put this. I'm the one who thought of this idea. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into anime dubbing. Um, obviously, it's really easy to celebrate direction, writing, uh, obviously acting. A lot of people want to talk about that. But what a lot of people don't want to talk about is what brings the magic to to life, honestly. Um, you you can have people sit and scream in a booth until they're blue in the face, but it's not them who's going to magically match it up to the flaps. It's not them who's going to make it sound good. So we uh, this was inspired, uh, of all people, actually by Jeremy Inman, who, uh, when another site was doing their Best of the Year award... Uh, had noticed that they did not take uh, the sound mixing and sound engineering people into account. And I said, you know what? It's what good is our award show if we don't talk about all of the people who bring a dub to life? So this year we have added best sound mixing to our awards because without them, uh, we would be out of a podcast. Mm hmm. Um, we obviously, we've always celebrated writing, we've always celebrated directing, we've always celebrated acting, but we've never celebrated these guys. Hardy, do you want to start, or do you want me to start, since this is my award? I, I, my I could go ahead. I picked yeah. some pretty easy choices, to because this is a brand new award, I want to take a sort of ease into it. Um, so for my silver award, I went with something that, for the past few years, has always sounded really good, sounded really, um, consistent. Uh, it's got to be when you're when you're dealing with a long running show, you have to make sure that the consistency stays equal throughout. And good thing about this show is that it has been going on for three years on and off. And uh, every time that it comes back, it still sounds just as good as the season before it. Um, so for my silver award, I gave it to My Hero Academia season three. Nice. It, yeah, uh, it has a huge cast of characters and a lot of different actors involved. And yet, despite all that, 
every season sounds good and just as good as the one before it and so on and so on and i'm looking forward to season four and the sound mixing should be should just be i'm, I'm looking forward to sound mixing being just as good in the next season for my gold award though i went with something a little bit more challenging and by a little bit more challenging i mean something that does not exist outside of this show Sound mixing is difficult enough when you have a consistent cast. When you have characters and actors established and and recurring. How on earth they were able to mix something like Pop Team Epic together every single week, which changed every week. You have a entirely different cast. And, and also... You have segments that are spoken in French. You have segments that are left in the Japanese. You have backmasking segments. You have a segments with with different effects added on for comedic effect. Um, it just had to have been a nightmare because every episode is completely different every single week. And so I have to give it major, major props to the sound mixing uh, guys running behind Pop Team Epic. Awesome. So I'll go next. So my my silver award for sound mixing, and this went uh, because, unfortunately, due to either rights or time, um, got to mix not only um, English and Japanese singing, um, it had to mix together crazy sound effects. It had to mix together club scenes. It had to mix together uh, monster noises. It had to mix together the goddamn fucking apocalypse. Um, tits out, boyfriend cleaved in half. I am forcibly removed from God's plane of existence. <laughs> uh, my silver award goes to Devilman Crybaby. Oh, God. <laughs> Which, um, thank you, Lost Thief, for that tweet that I butchered. I thought the mix on Devilman Crybaby was fantastic. I thought the, it, it sounded fabulous. I thought the, the way that they mixed almost seamlessly between the Japanese rapping and the English speaking came off really well uh like i said there's a lot of very crazy monster effects and noises and and stuff in there uh but my my best sound mixing award goes to a show that has to not only bring the mix over to uh what is traditional for an american audience to hear it has to mix together a lot of as if if devil man's monster noises weren't insane enough uh this show's monster noises uh, were enough to do things to me. Uh, there was a point where what's an actress, which, man, I would have loved to give her best best actress in a drama, but one of her castmates just beat her out. Uh, the mix was so effective that it almost evoked me to vomit. Oh. Um, as, as weird as that sounds. Uh, but the biggest thing that this mix had to do was to highlight what is essentially considered the greatest anime OST of the contemporary era. And I cannot say enough nice things about the mix on Made in Abyss. Made in Abyss's dub sounds phenomenal on uh, f for essentially for a home video release. Um, it balances the performance acting with Kevin Pen uh, per Perkins? Penkin. Penkin. Kevin Pankin's gorgeous score. Um, I'm not. I'm not kidding you when I said Brittany Lauda almost made me vomit. Mm. Um, her her crying that she does in episode ten and screaming. Yeah, that did some shit to me at two in the morning. Mm. Um, I can vouch. I, yeah, I I played it for him over the phone and he was uncomfortable. Mm. Um, I'm glad I'm not watching me in a piss right now. Guess um, what you own, Steph. I know, babe. You're gonna watch. Uh, it. made in a Mr. Mr. Cthulhu's Mr. Cthulhu's t happy fun time terror hole. Um, <laughs> for kids. Um, Mr. Cthulhu's a uh, happy fun time terror hole for children. As seen uh, on Nickelodeon. As seen on Nickelodeon. Um, join. Join Rachel and Robert as they go down the hole and nothing <laughs> bad happens. It's a four kids version now. <laughs> no, that's a it's a YouTube Mr. Video. Char. Look it up. Oh god. Yeah, that's an actual video. Oh, right. Um, Look no, 
But I thought that I thought the mix on Maiden Abyss came out phenomenal, and for a show that I had actually never seen in Japanese before, uh, did a really good job with its sound design, uh, bringing that sound design over to the West with the new track over on it. My silver award for best sound mixing in a dub, I decided to give it to a series that had a lot, had a few complexities with it because it had to work with a in a sense, it had to work with a um, traditional Japanese style, in a way. But it also has to work with these different little creatures and giving them different different kinds of voices and tweaking them just enough to make them distinguishable in their own right. This also gave me... Well, actually, one of my pretend contenders for voice acting Black Magic that unfortunately didn't make it... Uh, Kent Williams. <laughs> but, um, I honestly enjoyed the mixing for the Morose Mononokian. Uh, as, as fun of a show as it is, it gave a lot of different intricacies, especially particularly with the yokai, that I just loved so, so much while watching the show. But there is something to be said when every single week... You create utter chaos yeah. <laughs> and just downright insanity. And the only two voice actors that stay in the show at one point in time are Chris Sabin and Ian Sinclair. I have, oh, that big team. I have to give my gold award for best sound mixing to in a dub, just like Hardy. I have to give it to Poppy Mavic on this one, um, with so many different. With, like, accent work, with different voices, with different characters, with different sounds. Just everything about that, the mix for this, was, oh my god. <laughs> like, it was pure insanity. And it was just a fun ride every second of the way. Alright. What do we have for the other hosts for Best Sound Mixing in a Dub? For Noah Clue's award for Best Sound Mixing, he picks Made in Abyss. Many monsters, locations, and curses plague the abyss, brought terrifyingly to life by this team's superb handling of everything from corpse weepers to orb piercers. For Jet's award for best sound mixing, he went with SSSS Gridman. Good sound mixing isn't always given the credit it's due, but I appreciate how the crew on Gridman really managed to capture the high energy of tokusatsu shows in their work on this show and everything from the sound effect to how attack names are shouted made it feel like i was watching a saturday morning cartoon and helped make this show a tighter experience roots of justice's award for best set on mixing is also sssss gridman sound mixing isn't considered much when you look at a dub on the surface but it may be one of the most important quality control steps available to the studio. Gridman has taken this to the extreme, being loud and boisterous when it needs to be and having a quieter and more ambient air er, during arguments or when the antagonists scheme. Gridman is by far one of the best sounding dubs of the year and the unsung heroes of the engineering and mixing divisions of Funimation are largely to thank. For Gigi's award for best sound mixing, she went with Hitorijime, my hero. There are parts in this dub where the characters whisper and you literally have to lean in close to your device to hear them. There are hidden easter eggs for other for other anime that you have to hunt for. And sure, a select few of the characters are your normal, loud, cute anime boys, but most aren't. The mixing here makes everybody sound human and there is a feat for modern anime dubs. For my own personal award for best sound mixing, I went with Made in Abyss. The world of the Abyss already feels like a living, breathing creature, and the sound design on display for Made in Abyss, from the creatures to the environmental interactions, all sound unique and very, very chilling. For Amon Duel, his award for best sound mixing went to the Junji Ito Collection. That's some good, creepy soundscape right there. Mm. Choice stuff. I can agree with that, mm -hmm. for sure. For Jamal's award for best sound mixing, he went with Hells. I applaud the effort that Sound Cadence put into this movie, from the sound design for the hellish landscape to the ADR engineering for the cast and Walla. 
Hells is a good time to be had. And for Lack the Watcher, he went with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable. Nice. Uh, is it time for me to be sappy again? No, it's not. Oh, cool. It's, my, it's for, time for my actual personal favorite award of the evening. The Voice Acting Black Magic Award. <laughs> A.K.A. the Josh Gurley Award for making everybody go, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so this got established a few years ago. Basically, actually, thanks to Ian Sinclair, but Josh just perfected it. Yeah, Josh, it started with Ian Sinclair, Josh perfected it. It's a performance in a show where you're just like, you think that they sacrificed something to a demon in order to obtain this kind of performance and almost could be unrecognizable and insane. It's just, it's a lot of fun. But, um, I guess I'll start this off. Oh, hold on. I thought Hardy usually starts this off now this one. Oh, whoops. My bad. Go, you, yeah. You're so used to going first, Megan. But I'm like, so used to going first. Yeah. Hardy, what, what are okay. your awards for voice acting Black Magic, sir? Okay. So this was almost my gold award um, because it was it just dropped my jawline. Um, but I'm going to have to go with Sarah Ann Williams from Kakegurui. <laughs> She's getting a lot of shit tonight. <laughs> because that legit did not sound like Sarah Ann Williams at all. No, and she is usually these little girl characters with this really with really high pitched voices. In this, it is the complete opposite. She is able to drop her voice to a tone I did not think was possible for her. And Good God, the character is just so incredibly insane. I couldn't decide whether to give this to the ham or, but I decided to go with Black Magic instead because legit, I was confused and frightened and at times slightly aroused. So. <laughs> what? There's no shame. Yeah. No. In the words of, in the words of Danganronpa, the abridged things, I was horrified and her aroused. Aroused, you might say. Yes. But anyways, yes, it was just an amazing performance. And uh, let's just say I want to keep an eye on Sarah in the future for this type of thing. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. God. Yes. You know, Kakaguru I'm, I'm too drunk to boo you. Yeah. But for my gold, <sighs> the only way I could properly, properly give this performance its due credit oh, is no. to try my best to reenact it. <clears throat> oh god, here we go! Here we go! Okay. Excuse me. Hey there! I'm Chomp Chomp Bacon! And I just love to eat bacon! I'm gonna put it in the pan and fry it up and oh god! Holy fuck, my sides! God damn it! You could not pay me to believe. Until until it was announced that that was Johnny Young Bosch as a piece of bacon. <laughs> Stuff immolating bacon. Uh, yes, it is. It's so it is so jarring that I'm actually giving this entire award, the gold award, to a character to an actor who only voices half of an episode of one episode, because through that entire half of that episode of Pop Team Epic, I could not tell that was Johnny at any of the roles. And yeah, so yeah, I, I have to give my award to Johnny Young Bosch's <laughs> Chomp Chomp, Chomp Bacon. bacon. <laughs> okay, I I did not expect that <laughs> to happen, um, but uh, good reenactment there. Uh, mm -hmm. Megan, your awards for uh, voice acting Black Magic, please. So I want to preference this with saying, and Andrew knows this because he got to watch my reaction to the first time I have ever seen this episode of this show. If you did not tell me that this was this actor in the silver position before it started, and I would have thought you were fucking lying to me. For the love of God, drop Christopher Bevan's me! <laughs> what? <laughs> there is a very dis disturbingly charming episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable called Let's Go Get Italian Food. <laughs> and Christopher Evans has to play an Italian chef. And if you have not seen it, it'll take you a good while to realize, oh my god, that's Christopher Bevins <laughs> trying to help Okiyasu to become a good person by nearly murdering him with some spaghetti. <laughs> what? 
The character's name is Tony Trendy. Tony, yeah, it, his power is what? What is it? Red Hot Chili Peppers? No. It's Pearl I know, Jam. Uh, Pearl, Pearl Jam. Jam. But yeah, no, there is an entire episode where they go to this Italian restaurant and his power is to heal people with food, but in the most grotesque and awful way possible. <laughs> it's like the one time they actually didn't kill the dog in JoJo's when I thought they were going to kill the dog. Oh my god. But I and Andrew can vouch for me on this that if you didn't know it was Chris Bevins, you wouldn't have thought it was him until the end. It's true, right, dude? Like, legit. I would not have known if he hadn't announced like prior to it going up. Um, and he's a one episode wonder, but there is something to be said where I have to literally wait for the credits to see if this person is this thing. Good Lord Almighty, what the fuck did Anastasia Munoz do to be Andy Old Bag? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> She just <laughs> edgy boo, <laughs> like oh my god, Anastasia Munoz! I had no idea it was Anastasia, because like, look, I'm gonna be real. Anastasia Munoz is known for being hot moms in shows I watch, like Free and Gridman, mm-hmm. or she's um one of the Shota Swords. Didn't know Wendy Oldbag was a thing she could do. And I was impressed. And I had no... I think I bring this up on the episode for Ace Attorney that I didn't know it was her. Um, And I loved it. She was the most awful cretin of an old woman ever. And she was fucking nuts. Uh, But those are my picks. Bevins and, and Munoz. Okay. My turn. My Silver Award goes to an actor who... I think he's he's definitely cemented himself this year as an actor. But holy hell. It took me a minute to recognize Matt Shipman in My Hero Academia. <laughs> I was so close to playing him too! <laughs> like, okay. So, if you know what Matt Shipman looks like as a person, you stick him and you stand him next to what's his character's name? Andrew. Or what? Inasa? Inasa. Inasa, thank you. You take Matt, put him next to Inasa. What the fuck? <laughs> like, two different personalities, essentially. Like, two different characters, and Inasa has, like, a lower, like, gruffer voice than what Matt, you hear normally from Matt. <laughs> and it's like, what the actual living hell? This is amazing. It took me a second to figure it out it was him. I'm like, what the? I'm like, okay, cool, impressed. I need more of this. But, um, there is something to be said when you have to, like, question everything and call bullshit. Yeah, like, why the fuck is Dallas Reed watching Knack and Me? <laughs> no. Uh, I, re- I think I remembered calling bullshit, uh, during the episode when we recorded this. That is not Anastasia Munoz. Yes! <laughs> that is not Anastasia Munoz. In Ace Why do we have a sacred no! <laughs> it was so great. Like, because like you were saying, you never really have heard, we never really heard Anastasia more as like an elderly, elderly woman before. Not only that, but like a like fast talking fangirl elderly woman before, which is Wendy Oldbag. And it is just absolutely amazing. Like, she just takes, she'll take the show and just run with it. It's fantastic. And you can almost, un, it's, she's unrecognizable almost. Except for, like, maybe a few twinges here and there. But, oh, I, that's the epitome of voice acting black magic when I have to physically yell and call bullshit out on you. Like, that is not this person. That's why I love this award so much. It's like, if I have to call bullshit and say it's not you, you fucking won in my book. <laughs> All right. For Noah Clue's award for voice acting black magic, he went with Christopher Sabat from Pop Team Epic. His comment, no explanation is necessary. I agree. Yes. For Jet's award for voice acting black magic, he went with Sarah Ann Williams from Kake Gurui and says, it was a tough choice between this and KG Tang's Dazai, but considering that I pretty much exclusively associate Sarah Ann Williams' voice with characters who are little gremlins, hearing her play a husky-voiced gun nut was a pretty big shock. 
and I almost couldn't tell it was her the entire time. It's always nice when an actor can continue to be surprising, and this particular performance was one of the biggest surprises I listened to all year. For Roots of Justice's award for voice acting Black Magic, he himself went with KG Tang from Bungo Stray Dogs and says, Any performance where I cannot recognize the actor in the role is great. When it turns out to be somebody whose vocal profile I'm used to is challenged beyond what I assume they're capable of is even better. I'm not used to KG Tang performances being as soft and subtle as Osamu Dazai, but it's a welcome performance that helped make the dub as solid as it was. For Gigi's award for voice acting Black Magic, she went with Caitlin Barr for Magical Girl Raising Project and says the level of complexity in Caitlyn's two, yes, two performances in this anime are off the chart. Not only does she have to play a little boy, but she also has to portray a teenage boy who turns into a magical girl woman and all the hardships and magical moments that come with the territory. Get it, girl! This was amazing. I'm sorry, you saying get it, girl is hilarious to me. I'm glad to entertain. <laughs> Four! Do it again. <laughs> yeah. At this time, snap your fingers up in the air when you say it. Oh my god! Okay. Do it! Do it! Three, two, one. Get it, girl! <laughs> <laughs> I love you. That was fabulous. Stop being heterosexual on the other side of the computer. Okay. As for my own personal award for voice acting black magic, I went with Zach Aguilar from March Comes In Like a Lion. The sheer variety and range on display that ja Zach is showing is astonishing. He's funny, energetic, determined, and he plays this very good boy exceptionally. I honestly did not know this actor was capable of sounding like this at all. Good stuff. Good job, Speedwagon Sperm. For Amon Duel's award for voice acting Black Magic, he went with Johnny Young Bosch yeah! for Hot Team Epic. <laughs> And says, wait, the bacon was Johnny? <laughs> really? What? What even is this show? <laughs> That's great. For Jamal's personal award for voice acting Black Magic, he went with Michaela Krantz from Magical Girl Raising Project. Michaela provides a wild western accent to the gunslinger Calamity Mary, blowing my expectations out of the water, possibly with a revolver pistol. Lack, lack the Watcher lack did not have one lack for voice acting from this black one. magic. Okay. Our next award. Megan. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's me. It's time for Sappy McSap times. So will you, will you be so willing to present our next award, please? So, it is time for the award that we literally tell none of you about until it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, as Hardy started last year as a tradition, uh, we have started the Unsung Hero Award. This goes to a member of the anime industry whose work throughout the year and beyond has brought light into uh, has brought light into our community, who has really helped to push, uh, especially what dubs are in the Western sense. And this year, our award goes to somebody who made the very tough choice to leave our community. They made the decision to move on to another facet of uh, nerddom that is very closely intertwined with uh, the anime community. But that doesn't mean we can't celebrate the absolute sparkle that they have left on us. Um, I think a lot of us who go back in the day of Funimation's social presence may know this person very well. But her work over the last two years, basically reviving a fandom, uh, can't be understated. This year's Unsung Hero Award goes to Charlene Ingram, better known as Char. Char is essentially the son of the Sailor Moon revival for Viz. Without Char... Sailor Moon's presence at large industry conventions would be so understated from the Moonlight Parties to the giant 
just panels that they run for Sailor Moon with the cast and crew, how they would bring together the cast announcements. Uh, she would also do a lot of panels for Viz, from JoJo's to just their industry panels. But her, me knowing Char as a presence online has gone back as far as Funimation. I remember when she dressed up as Holo for, for Funimation. So this year's, uh, and Hardy would be remiss if I didn't say that she helped bring together Helsing Ultimate. Yes, yes, she did. Mm. She she helped to bring together Helsing Ultimate stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, after the um, long hiatus and uncertain future that was left that it was left in because of the Jinion departure. Shar, our community wouldn't be what it is without the hours of hard work you and the teams under your direction have have done. So we want to thank you as you have moved on to working with Capcom, uh, ensuring that this is unofficially sponsored by <laughs> Double May Cry 5. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> believe you brought that joke full circle into this segment. God damn it. Without intending it to. I did not have that planned. <laughs> um, but Char, seriously, thank you for all that you do. Um, I don't know how much of this episode you'll listen to, but we will make a nice big thing for you on Twitter. Um, and thank you for all of the sparkle that you have brought to the not only the dub anime community, but the anime community as a whole. And we hope that the fighting game community and the video game community will accept all the sparkle for you as well. And I am done. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. I had none of that written out. I just did that off the top of my that head. That was Way amazing. Yeah. Way to go. That was pretty good. Well done, Megan. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving on. As I, as I shove my face full of chocolate. Chip. <laughs> so our next award, we're going to finally start getting into some acting, some more finite acting categories here. Uh, so our first award is for best female performance in a dub for comedy. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's a it's for a performance in a comedy English dub for a female actress that we thought stand, stands above the rest. Uh, Hardy, can you go first with your selections, please? Sure thing. You know, it's always good hearing a brand new actor or actress playing a brand new character and really putting forth their best effort. But you know what also is really refreshing? When you bring back a character we haven't seen in a long, long time and are able to still get the same original actor who portrayed them all those years ago. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that Kari Walgren is just as good in Fully Cooley Alternative if she wasn't, you know, as she was back in the first Fully Cooley. And remember, that was her very first role. And now she gets to reprise probably her favorite character that she's ever done. And uh, Saber says good choice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just she has not lost a single bit of that spark. I know the Fully Cooley sequels were kind of had a mixed reception uh, just as the show as itself. But one thing that did not suffer at all was Kari came back and she just nailed Haruko. Uh, probably not literally, but um, uh, well, <coughs> excuse if me. you could, you would. Yeah. Women are from Mars. No, men are from. Uh, no, is it men are for Venus? Uh, no, women, women are, are from, from Mars, Mars men and are from Venus. Men are for Venus. I don't know about you, but I got a giant Venus. <laughs> she also raps, and it's amazing. Yeah, that was. They wrote that specifically for her, if you can believe it. So, but unfortunately, as refreshing as that role goes, I couldn't bring myself to give it to Gold because there is one actress who made me belly laugh so hard this year i at times almost was brought to tears rolling on the floor laughing so hard um move over umaru you have been out gremlin and that gremlin's oh. name is chio but <laughs> played by michaela krantz yes more so than any other actress this year, she just had this crazy energy to her and just just rapid fire quips all the time. And and just going from one weird voice to another and it's, at times it was screaming and, and just acting goofy and everything. I just, I haven't laughed this hard since last year with Umaru-chan. So yeah, I have to give it to Michaela and Chio School Road. Megan, your awards, please. My runner-up for best female in a comedy... 
I almost didn't have a runner-up for this category. <laughs> um, I was like, well, I watched a lot of comedy shows this year, and unfortunately that was on me. Because uh, a lot of the comedies this year just did not appeal to me. Um, just just a, a lot of a lot of it didn't, unfortunately. But there was there was one show that I very much wanted to see get dubbed when uh, I heard it was coming out, and I was very disappointed when during its airing season it didn't get dubbed, and instead got passed over for essentially Tokyo Ghoul fucks Twilight and porn. Yeah. Um, I know where this is uh, going. So Steph knows where this is going. Mm. I'm not pulling your leg. I'm not pulling upon your leg. Let's pour one out for Weeaboo Cinderella. <laughs> Rainbow in your heart, always and forever. My runner-up is Sarah Wiedenhoff as Tess as Teresa Wagner, and Tata doesn't fall in love. She is so adorable. She is just Andrew. Hi. See. <laughs> Yes, the puppies! Yes, the puppies. <laughs> where, Hardy, I know you haven't seen this show. But there's a part where Scott Gibbs goes on a rant about titties. <laughs> I have seen that part. And he goes, we have to save the sweater puppies. <laughs> yes, the puppies. And s- yes, the, pu- the most earnest. The most sincere. Just, just, we, the most sincere and earnest. She is such, and, and I don't care what anybody says, Teresa is weeaboo Cinderella. Um... <laughs> We Barella, if you say, if you must. Mm-hmm. But there is one comedy performance this year from an actress that I associate with being soft-spoken, good little girl characters, and not the voice of a not the female voice of my generation. My best actress in a comedy goes to Christina Marie Cabanos as Sone in the Dragon Pilot. He's Sone and Masotan. She is blunt. She is stupid. She is a millennial. She's going to support you just like that yogurt supports intestinal environments. <laughs> <laughs> she is going to she is gonna scream like a banshee when she realizes that she wants Bryce's Pappenbrook. Um, okay. That was a really bad dick joke. That was and I feel terrible. bad now. That was you awful. should feel bad. I feel that was the, the worst thing I've ever said on this episode. So far. On one of these episodes. And I've insisted that Andrew fuck stands under tail. He's just sitting oh, there. He's like, what? No, Megan, he's just sitting here staring at the computer like right now, just with a straight face. Like, you fucking asshole. You don't deserve a response. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I know you got a bone for boners. Boner for bones. Um... Your secret's safe with me and the internet. Um, but just Christina's performance as Hisone is just so full of life, and it's so genuinely funny and charming that it sucks that it took for so long for that dub to come out. It was so good. She was just an instant lock from the second I heard her as Hisone. So my my gold award has to go to uh, Christina Cabanos. What a world. I'm not sorry, Andrew. What a world. Y'all assholes covered my two winners, actually. Wow. Ah! So, my silver award, I decided to give... See, I also considered this actress for best for best female for drama, but for a completely different reason and for a very unique and almost groundbreaking role because it's one that you don't see often in the community but the second i saw this one she kind of became a shoo-in and i gotta give my silver award to the gremlin known as michaela kranz in chio school road (laughs) nice i know the other one was gonna be for uh mootski in tokyo gold yeah the other one would have been mootski but um chio oh dear sweet lord she is bombastic she is a spaz she's she is just completely off the wall with these crazy schemes and ideas and her thinking and her mentality it's just batshit and cr- insane and i just loved every second hearing michaela um as Chio. and as for my gold winner it's a puppy <laughs> you kind of fucking ruined it i gotta give her the weeberella sarah we Wien- didn't for tata never falls in love Weeberella, Weeberella, it's Weeberella. Jesus Christ. We can knit the sweater puppies. 
<laughs> and watch Rainbow Show Gun. <laughs> you just died. I can't here. unhear it. That is perfect. It's ah! out. So with Sarah, it's not. I think there's a lot of aspects to Teresa's character that I just love so much. Just her fun energy and her sincerity and just this genuine curiosity that Teresa has. All oh yeah, and did we mention she has to do it with a fucking accent? Yeah, oh, yeah. I was just about to get to that. She has to do oh, this all bad. with an accent. Like, this character in and of itself is complex in its own way and it's so much fun. And she has Sarah has amazing comedic timing with this show. So there is there's nobody else I could give this award to at the stage. I have to give it to Sarah for Hot and Never Falls in Love. There's just no other person. Um, Andrew, what do we have for our other awards from the other hosts? For Noah Clue's award for best female in the comedy, he picked Michaela Krantz for Shio's School Road. He says... Michaela's role is packed with enough dorky one-liners and social awkwardness to make this comedy of errors actually funny. God bless you, lovable idiot. Jet's award for best female in a comedy goes to Brina Palencia for Hina Matsuri. Making a character sound perpetually emotionless and deadpan seems like something that would get really annoying after a while, but Brina Palencia's delivery is so effective that almost every line she says as Hina never fails to make me laugh while also making me want to give her a hug. It was a whole lot of fun to listen, and it really shows how impressive Brina Palencia's range is even now. And Roots of Justice's award for best female in a comedy goes to Amanda Lee for Hina Matsuri. He says, It feels like cheating declaring Am Amanda Lee's Anzu my winner of the best comedy actress category, considering the points I gave her the award for fit more in line with drama, but she's able to be funny and poignant as a long gir young girl living in a homeless community and trying hard to be humble in the face of adversity very well. Gigi's pick for best female in a comedy goes to Sarah Wiedenheff for Tata Never Falls in Love. Yeah! She says, I practically cried over her performance in the Tata Dub Talk episode, but so please listen to that if you want to hear me gush over this in its entirety. From the accent work to the innocence to the determination, every part of Sarah's performance as Teresa was perfect, and Gigi definitely fell in love. As for my personal pick for best female in a comedy, I went with Christine Marie Cabanos for Dragon Pilot Hisone and Masatan. Christine gives Hisone so much life and is a very believable character who never fails to get a kick out of me. P.S. Best scream of 2018, period. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. For, for Amandul's pick for best female in a comedy, he also picked Christine Marie Cabanos for Dragon Pilot Hisone and Masatan. I will support them like this yogurt supports a healthy intestinal environment. <laughs> Thank you guys for that one. Mm. For... That is still not the best adaptated line of the year, and I will get to that one later. Okay. Jamal's pick for best female in a comedy goes to Emily Fajardo for Chio School Road. Okay. Emily provides a great parallel and calendar balance as best friend Manana to Michaela's Chio. Sometimes kicking things up a notch and sometimes bringing Chio down back to earth. And Lack the Watcher's pick for best female in a comedy goes to Tia Ballard for Harakana Receive. All right. So. It's time. Now that we've talked about the ladies in comedy. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Being dumb in the background like Chio. We finished talking about the ladies in comedy. Let's talk about the men in comedy. We're going to be talking about and give out our awards for the best male performance in a dub for comedy. Uh, Hardy. All right. Would you like to go first, please? I, I certainly would. And this one, I got to say, I'm a little bit biased because uh -oh. this one came really personal to me. I spoke about this. I don't think this episode has actually come out yet. It will be out by the time that this one is on. But I have a bit of a history with this one particular character. Oh, I, know I know where this is going. Yep. Um few years back, I was involved in what was called a fun dub, where uh, a few of us would 
uh, dub over the lines of a video game. And that video game in question was Phoenix Wright. And one of the characters that I got to play was Detective Dick Gumshoe. And the actor who I tried my best to emulate was Brian Massey's performance as uh, Lad Russo in Bacchano. Fast forward several years later, Ace Attorney actually has an anime with an English dub now, and who voices Dick Gumshoe? None other than Brian, Brian Massey. Massey. And so, yeah, this one I had to go with because it is personally very close to me. Um, it's just he was my inspiration for being a voice actor. And so to see him play the role that I so carefully crafted after him, it's just it's a real experience. And I just I really love it. Um, now, that having been said, the one role that made me laugh the hardest. There have been some really great, funny, funny roles out there. You never expect, you expect the funny, this person in the show to be an actual character. You expect them to be like the goofball or the, the perverted uh, harem lead, or, or sometimes you even expect them to be like the uh, quiet stoic type who just hands out, um, like one-liners in the background, sort of like a Kyum situation. It's very rarely that it's the narrator who has you laughing ah! the hardest. Oh my god, did you oh really? God. I really did. For the first time ever, I'm giving the best male comedy to David Wald as the narrator or the voice of God in Mr. Tonegawa Middle Management Blues. Yeah, because no other role has made me just absolutely split my sides. Like, basically, David Wald getting let out of the cage and taking the leash off and just being whatever that is. I'm sorry, I don't think Gigi would ever put her own personal deity in a cage. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just, it's an it's a amazing performance to listen to, and it cracks me up every time. Okay. Megan, your awards, please. So I went a completely different route with my comedy performance this year. And uh, of all things, uh, Jet actually brought up uh, one of the aspects of both of these performances is that when a lot of people go into comedies, a lot of the best performances to them are the loud, big, bombastic types or the uh, quipping one-liner guys. But there is an art to deadpan. And both of my gentlemen this year happen to be very good at it. My silver medal award goes to Blake Shepard as Tanaka in Tanaka Kun is Always Listless. Okay. This is a dub that is filled with a lot of over the top acting, like Monica Rial on cocaine, um, Lucy Christian the lesbian, Stephanie Whittles, nobody should know I'm Umaru inside. <laughs> Brittany Karbowski, I will cut I will cut you, Andrew Love. Andrew Love is the world's greatest boyfriend. I mean best mm -hmm. friend. And I feel really bad because I forget who plays his little sister. Um, I think it's Allison Sumerall. But Blake Shepard's Tonica is a... I think we bring it up in the episode, too. Blake Shepard could have... This performance as a character as a performance... Number one, I was super expecting uh, to hate because, uh, as you guys know, Tonica is played by my favorite Sayu, Ono Kencho. Um, and we bring it up in the episode that this is a character that is very easy to fuck up. Because he is sleepy and tired and he doesn't yell very much and he's almost speaks in almost a whisper and that can get really annoying to a lot of people but blake just was able to balance it out and just bring a lot of life to a character who has not a lot of life to him because he's gonna take a nap he's gonna take a nap right here um and i think that he did such an amazing job on it my gold medal for best actor in a comedy goes to my second favorite performance of this actor of all time. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Steph knows exactly who this is. Do I? Because we expect this actor to play a lot of very... He plays a lot of upbeat characters. Okay. He's everyone... Uh, in fact, I think a lot of people's uh, favorite role of his is one of anime's... Most upbeat, depressed little gremlins of all time. But god, did I love Jason the Brett! In the first one, <laughs> as, as Ashi! <laughs> I was 
wondering where you were getting at with that. No, that's not Ashia. No, he's Abano. I'm Abino. sorry, he's Abano. I get them confused. I just call them Aaron and Jason. <laughs> he, oh my God, Abano is the angriest, stuck up his ass motherfucker you'll ever meet. <laughs> And I love it so much because he has to play off of Aaron Dismuke, the screeching twink. <laughs> like, you've got hard. If you've never seen the Mirage Mononokian, it can literally be described as the odd couple help demon. Oh, yes. no. It's fantastic. And I'm and so excited. And he is 100% for Oscar. I'm so excited for season Oscar's season. the one that cleans up a lot, right? Okay. Or is that Felix? That's Felix. Okay, he is the Felix in yeah. this. And Jason's just, and there's a lot of really dramatic elements to it too, but just the amount of, I, it's like what I said with Nicholas Roy as Chuyo, where you can just tell how much somebody is done with someone else's bullshit. And Jason LaPrecht as Abano is just so good. I loved it so much. And this was like, I was really, really thinking about putting another actor here, but I moved him to another category and I will, I want to do a nice big long speech about this actor. But, and I feel really bad because I was really, really mean to Jason LeBrecht on an episode this year. Oh my God. But my dude <laughs> fucking nailed it. All right. So my best male performances in comedy the the two gentlemen that I selected, they, they're kind of similar, I think, to an extent. At least in the terms of the kind of humor that they have to portray. Because the humor for both of these characters is a bit more subtle. Uh, but one is very different than the other, still. Um, my Silver Award. The humor is subtle. But... It also has this fun little wit about it. Uh, and such a charming and charismatic performance that I had to include it. I'm going to give my silver silver award to Christopher Waycamp for Cacarillo, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits. The, the master, the master, he's, it was, it's such a fun role that obviously, because we hadn't, as far as we know, at least until that point, we had never seen Chris Waitcamp voice a Bishonen character before. He even himself said that. He's like, oh my god, I'm a hot guy! <laughs> yeah, and I just think it was it was very subtle performance, kind of at points flew under the radar, but when it was comedic, it had the perfect timing to it, and I just love the little intricacies during that performance for him. But... <laughs> I loved whenever he, Owie would call him old and he'd just get, like, really fucking offended. But my gold winner for best male performance in a comedy. It's another subtle, subtlety bit of humor. Sometimes a little dry. But this individual is done dealing with your bullshit. Uh, specifically, your, uh, yokai, ashia, stupid, pitity bullshit. I- <laughs> Mind melt again! <laughs> Mind melt is a thing this year for us! I also gave my gold award to Jason Lebrecht for the Morose Mononokian. <laughs> what is this thing? I swear to god, we did not do her no. awards together at all! Seriously, the- I have had no idea what her awards or his awards are all night. No. I swear to no. you. <laughs> yeah. The only person who knew about what my final awards are is Andrew because he helped me narrow them down. That was it. I knew both he of knew yours. What, I just he never knew said what, anything. You son of a bitch. You didn't tell me that. Yeah. No, I wanted you the to Grimgar find crew is the you only person. <laughs> okay. To be fair, the Grimgar crew all knew each other's. You're mean. I hate you. Anyway, but yeah, like, basically for all the reasons that Megan had said, like, Jason Lebrecht is just this tired-ass human being, done with your bullshit, and it's like, I just want to go home, get this over with, call it a day, and it's just- Get out of my fucking house, Aaron! It's, it's such a fun performance, and the humor is- so subtle, and it's a beautiful balance with Aaron Dismuke's bombastic, like- out there physical comedy kind of character it's just absolutely brilliant and i loved every second of it so andrew i would Ooh. like to point out that the actual best funny character in the morose mononokian is the mononokian itself yes. <laughs> unfortunately it has no voice the lines. mononokian is savage as fuck and i love it hardy did you ever watch the morose mononokian i have not unfortunately 
Okay, you need to for the world's sassiest RV. Nice. It's great. All right, so Andrew, what did the other hosts decide to give their awards for? For, for Noah Clue's choice for best male in a comedy, he went with Aaron Dismuk for Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san and says... Being a victim is one of the hardest tasks for an actor, and Aaron savors every episode of tumultuous teasing that we're just glad somebody else is suffering. As for Jet's pick for best male in a comedy, he went with Josh Petersdorf for Agretzko. While Ton was a character is pretty unpleasant in Agretzko, the show also manages to make him pretty gosh darn funny, and Josh Peterdorf's delivery really helps with that. He's constantly overbearing in a way that is both grating and hilarious, and I was equally impressed at how well that he was able to handle the serious side of the character and was able to make me believe he was a bit more complex than he first appeared. It's not quite the funniest dub performance I've heard all year, but it's definitely my favorite out of a comedy series. As for Roots of Justice, his pick for best male actor in a comedy is Ben Phillips, for Shiraishi, the Escape King, in Golden Kamoi. Golden Kamoi skirts a weird line between drama, action, and comedy. I knew I wanted to mention an actor from the series in a category, and Shiraishi stuck out to me as a character who would be complicated to dub, and he's more complicated than a simple comic relief. He's both more competent and incompetent than his goofy face lets on, and Ben Phillips handles both perfectly. As for Gigi, her best male in a comedy is... I actually can't see. Rico Fajardo in Zombieland Saga. This almost made my voice acting black magic choice, but I loved Rico's performance so much here that I bumped him up to best actor in a comedy. Taking on a Mamoru Miyano role is a challenge in itself, especially when he's practically playing himself in said anime. But Rico made it his own, and it made me laugh more than I thought possible. Now, the real question is, if Udapri ever gets a dub, can he pull off the softer side of Tokia as well? Of course she got Ooh, Udapri into our actually, award ooh. show. Of course you got I Udapri like into our award show, Gigi! I mean, first of all, one, if he was going to play anybody, he would totally be a better Reiji. Actually, I can see that. And I want to see that. Mm -hmm. But I can actually kind of, I'm curious, I would be curious for a Tokyo too, actually. Alrighty. Uh, okay, come on, Josh Gridley would be the Okay. <clears throat> As for my own personal take on my best male in a comedy, I went with Jared Green <laughs> from Hina Matsuri. Jared Green is playing a literal Yakuza gangster tough guy who is also a dorky dad dealing with a bunch of weird as shit kids. Jared's gangster sweetly sardonic performance as Nita is hysterical. Amon Duel's choice for best male in a comedy is Rico Fajardo in Zombieland Saga. Rico takes a role that is literally modeled on its Japanese voice actor and makes it his own with hilarious results. As for Jamal, Jamal's pick for best male in a comedy goes to Jason Marnocha for Hells. Jason's performance as the hellish headmaster Helvis, say that five times fast, is foppish and very distinctive. Please don't say he, that five times he fast. He keeps me entertained throughout the entire film. And Lack the Watcher's pick for best male in the comedy is Kyle Ignesi from Hanabato. Yeah! Can I try? No. But you know what you can do? Is it time for our first viewer's choice award? Absolutely, Megan. Will you present our first Viewer's Choice Award of the year? It's like a Kids' Choice Award, except for I don't get slimed at the end, and the award isn't a cool blimp. Um, <laughs> but we did find it in Cthulhu's murder hole. Stop it. Oh, fine. This year's Best Actress Award had ten phenomenal actresses across both comedy and drama dubs. To remind everybody what the ten nominees were, they were Tia Ballard for Bloom Into You, Christina Marie Cabanos, The Dragon Pilot, Lexi Cowden, A Silent Voice, Erica Harlicker, Violet Evergarden, Brittany Lauda, Made in Abyss, You Put Michaela Krantz in the Wrong Spot, Michaela Krantz for Chia School Road, Erica Mendez for Gretzko, Lindsay Seidel for SSSS Gridman, Christina V for Devilman Crybaby, and Sarah Wiedenhaft for Tata Never Falls in Love. 
may I have a drum roll, please? <laughs> and your winner is Erica Harlicker for Violet Evergarden. Woo! Woo! Congratulations, Erica. Uh, congratulations. I have to put which Erica is. <laughs> congratulations, Erica Harlicker, for your beautiful and moving performance as Violet herself. Hardy. Yes. Can you please snap and say get it, girl, in the deepest voice you can? <laughs> oh my god. Get it, girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what you just reminded me of? What? Have you ever seen Hercules? <laughs> Uh, yes. You yes, know, I at have. the very beginning when Charleston Heston's like, hit it, ladies. <laughs> to which, by the way, for nobody who doesn't know, yes, that is actually fucking Charleston Heston. All right, our next award. Let's see. It's time to go from comedy to drama. Our first dr- performance award for drama is our best female performance in a drama. Since Megan wants to go last... Hardy, can you go first with your award winners, please? Okay. Oh, boy, are y'all going to be disappointed with me. What did you do? What did you do? What (sighs) did you do, Mr. Hardy? Well, there is a certain show that caused a lot of controversy this past year. Um, Some people loved it, others not so much. But one thing that we could all agree on was that the dub was really fantastic and it was yep especially especially its female lead darling in the franks is a very polarizing show but what we could all agree is that tia ballard as zero two absolutely rocked it um i know that a lot of people preferred her performance in other shows like bloom into you but for me this was probably this was the one that made me stand up and say, wow, she is a fantastic actress. Because usually you're used to listening to her as happy or, or listening to her as some sort of exuberant, uh, energetic character. No, she brings sort of this sensuality to Zero Two that just gets cuts right to the core and makes you just kind of sort of bite your lip to almost where it's uncomfortable how good it is. And it's just, ugh. I, I, and I know that it was very polarizing for a show, and the show is not that good. I didn't hate it, but the best thing about it, in my personal opinion, was Tia Ballard. I'm not disappointed. That's a pretty. That's a fair, pretty fair. Thing. Like, look, I don't even. I, I really was not into the show, but her perform, the whole dub's performance is just fantastic. Yeah, the whole the dub itself is mm. spot my on. favorite part about the show. And for the longest part, Tia was safely in my gold spot. Let's just put it that way. Okay. But just recently, someone had to bump her out of it. And this actress has had a phenomenal year just this year alone. Because she's been in the lead in a lot of other shows. And I want... I. It's sort of hard because I want to give her an award for all of her performances. Um, Whether they were in Kakegurui, whether they were in Dragon Pilot, whether they were in some other Netflix show that she was the lead in. But I think the best one, not really her best performance per se, but the one that sums up her year in general is definitely Violet. And so my gold award goes to Erica Harlocker, not necessarily just for Violet, but for all of the performances that she's put out this year. She came out and did the impossible. She made a walk dub that wasn't terrible. So for if nothing else, I got to give it to her for that. Just not yet. Yeah, Violet was probably the one I'm going with, but it's for all of her performances this year. She has done amazing job. I can't believe I'm saying this. You know how Megan and I have been having mind Did you guys have the time? exact same uh, award? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to be the one that was different on this. It's not only the exact same. It's the exact, exact same, same order. order. That's the funniest part. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. So, 
similar to exactly how Hardy did this. My silver award for best female indie drama also went to Tia Ballard for Darling in the Franks. Granted, I have not seen Bloom Into You. I have heard fantastic things about it. But this is a role that I think really tested her in terms of in terms of her range and her versatility and maybe even sometimes her comfort zone depending on what you're looking at. Right. But I just found Zero Two a very captivating character because of Tia's performance in the show. Now, Erica Harlicker for Violet Evergarden took my gold spot. Er Violet is a very complex character, and it's a very complex character that you could, with this character type, that you could do so wrong with in one fell step. Because this is a more stoic and at times robotic kind of character. And I think Erica just did that so well. Not only that, but slowly learning about emotions, everything like that. Um, and it's just a beautiful and fantastic performance that I just fell in love with from start to finish. And I mean, and I mean, Andrew knows all about that. I, I we were on that episode. We were on yes. the episode. I fucking cried. <laughs> like it was, ah, uh, I was so emotionally invested in it, and because of it, there was no question, no doubt in my mind that Erica Harlicker had to take my number one spot. For Violet Evergarden. Uh, Megan, what are your winners? So I want to say this. As Steph was reading out her words, my cat Shinya just slowly came out from under my bed. <laughs> like, like, out of, like, something out of, like, a bad comedy. What? And just turned and looked at me and ran off. So what you're saying is Shinya is your winner for best female for a drama. No, she's not. Oh, God. So I have actually two completely different things from what these two Good. <laughs> Because what the um, fuck is that mind meld, Hardy? <laughs> I'm not going to lie that I thought for the longest time that my best drama award was set since May. Really? Okay. In my third place, my my winner of my silver award was almost Christina V for Devil Man Crybaby. She got knocked out at the literal last oh, wow. minute. My gold is completely set. And if you've watched the episode on that show, you will know exactly why. My silver award for best female in a drama is for Brittany Karbowski in Made in Abyss is not a genie. Mm. Holy fuck, guys. Like, if you've not seen Made in Abyss, I feel bad for... I don't want to talk about a lot of this for Steph's sake. Despite how much Nanachi is in a lot of the advertising Sentai does, I would like to point out that Brittany Karbowski does her performance... In about the equivalency of four episodes. And part of it involves uh, stuff acting off of Monica Rial that will break you as a human being. Uh, holy actual shit. Like, I can't say more. I don't want to spoil it for her. That's how good it is that I can't spoil that one for her. But my gold medal for best female in a drama is not for a main character. It's for a character that comes and goes, but had such a profound impact on my emotional state that I had to stop watching the show for a couple of days. They, I, like, a lot of people like to use this term as a joke in the anime community, especially among idiot edgelords. I am not kidding you in that I was triggered into panic attacks by this performance. Wow. It was so reminiscent of somebody in my own life that it was terrifying. And it is on a show I will never watch again, not because the show is bad, but because the show is so heavy on my own anxiety and depression that it legitimately triggers panic attacks in me. My gold award for best female in a drama goes to Lauren Landa as Kyoko in March Comes Like a Lion. If you have never seen March Comes Like a Lion, this character is Rei Kiriyama's adopted older sister who can be at base level, described as outright one of the most abusive anime characters you'll ever see in your life. 
And that's a bad reduction of her character. Lauren Landa's performance in this is so good. I almost fought Hardy and I, she was so close to being on the fan vote for best we, we, female. It was and she just fingers. missed out. I I literally had to to kick and scream. For like they had to really whittle me away from putting her on that list. I and Andrew can Andrew can vouch for me because he was on the recording of March Comes Like a Lion. After talking about her segment, we had to stop for almost 45 minutes because I was in tears. I legi she legi her performance legitimately triggers emotions about one of my family members. It is a crying fucking shame that a lot of people don't know that that dub's on Crunchyroll and that as a home release it is so expensive and that pisses me off because a lot of people aren't going to know how fucking good Lauren Land is as that character it is bar none if not one of the best female perform. It's it is legitimately to me the best anime performance of the year and my, fav my other favorite one my other, like, what, and I'm not kidding you that in Best Male in a Drama has my favorite performance by an act, two of my favorite performances by my respective winners ever. I am not kidding you in that Lauren Landa is the best dub performance of the entire year, and people can fight yeah. me on that. In other news, go to Crunchy Roll and watch March Comes In Like a Lion. Now Fucking that, Yeah, please. you will be. Now that I know that, it's watch. a bit of information. I'm gonna have to. Like, please watch March Comes In Like a Lion. Like, the dub for it is phenomenal, and Lauren's performance itself will, especially if you only know her from uh, something like uh, Attack on Titan Season 1, like, if you thought she was pretty good as Annie, prepare to have your jaw hit the floor. Also, please add Season 2's dub on Crunchyroll 2. Okay, thanks. Love you. For the bye. love of fucking God, please do it. All right. So, Andrew, what did the other hosts decide to do for their best female performance in a drama? All righty. For Noah Clue's pick for Best Female in a Drama, he went with Lucy Christian from Made in Abyss. Okay. He says, The enigma of Reg hides secrets that come out bit by bit through Lucy's unparalleled fear and drive to brave the Lovecraftian hellscape. Jet's pick. Oh, Cthulhu's fun time murder hole. Mm -hmm. Jet's pick for Best Female in a Drama goes to Erica Harlicker for Kake Gurui. While I know most people will probably lean more towards her performance in Violet Evergarden, I was extremely impressed with her take on Yumiko. Yumiko is a force of nature going from sweet and formal to psychotic and seductive, as well as everything in between, and Erica handles all of that emotional range without ever skipping a beat. In a year where Erica Harlicker has put out a lot of really strong work, this is the one that's stuck in my mind the most, and it's probably my favorite performance of hers in general. Roots of Justice pick for best female actor in a drama goes to Lindsay Seidel for SSSS Gridman. Gridman was an episode I was really proud to host, but my one regret was that I could not factor in Akane Shinju's story arc in the latter half of the series. The details of her story are elaborated upon, as well as hammering in her bored omnipotence and playing with others' lives. Episode 11 should be marked as a high point so far in Lindsay Seidel's career in anime dubbing voiceover. For Gigi's pick for Best Female in a Drama, she went with Amber Lee Connors for Citrus. What I love the most about English dubs is them having the ability to change my mind about a character I detested in the original Japanese. And Amber did just that with her performance of May in Citrus. She turned this aloof girl into one that had power through the sexuality in her voice along with the vulnerability necessary to portray the more likable aspects of this character. Bravo, girl. This was a treasure. As for my own personal pick for best female in a drama, I, too, had Lindsay Seidel for SSSS Gridman. Akane as a character is so fascinating and complex, and Lindsay is both cute and dangerously menacing as well as super threatening. She melts my heart, then freezes it before shattering it all over. There is so much complexity in Lindsay's performance, and I felt for her as much as I feared her. 
Amon Duel's pick for best female in a drama is Monica Rial for the Junji Ito collection. I don't usually associate Monica Rial with creepy, but boy does Tomia give her the chance to give a deeply unsettling performance. And for best female in a drama goes to from Jamal goes to Sarah Wiedenhef for Tata Never Falls in Love. This Dutch import provides a Danish ace accent that enhances Teresa's charm. She pulled upon our heartstrings, and I shan't forget this performance as a result. Well, Thank you, Jamal. Okay, you know what? I'll credit where it's due. Lack the Watcher's pick for best female in a drama goes to Erica Harlicker for Violet Evergarden. A lot of Erica Harlicker, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, moving on, we have... Our other drama perform, our other performance-based category for drama this time, we have the best male performance in a dub for drama. Hardy. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I have to go last because this is always the category that's my bone of contention. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hardy, can you go first with your winners, please? Sure, sure. I might, I might get choked up a little bit on this one. So. Okay. No, it's, it's okay. okay Do you want to go last? No, no, I can go first. I can go first. Um. For my Silver Award, this is an actor who I've been really impressed with uh, since he came onto the scene, mainly because of his amazing ability to voice characters that you would never expect him to voice. Um, this is a young man in his early 30s who is somehow capable of mimicking the voices of men much older easily in their late 40s even 60s and at no i think the best example of this is as ray chase's character in be the beginning because he basically plays a tired middle-aged guy who's done with everything who still has to go and solve this in unbelievably difficult mystery it's basically ray chase as house if you can imagine that that's interesting but yeah, yeah. he's basically he's just he's you can tell by the look at his eyes he is done with everything he just wants to go home probably take a shot of whiskey and let it and let everything but he can't because he's so embroiled in this murder mystery and his, he just sounds tired, but at the same time, he's brilliant. Uh, he just, it's grizzled, it's, it's, um, it's down to earth, very earthy, almost guttural performance from Ray Chase. And what's even more amazing is that he plays the character's father as well, and he sounds even older. So, I think I mentioned this earlier, a lot of people slept on Be the Beginning. Uh, I think more people really need to go check it out. Because um, two stories in the show run perpendicular to one another, and one of them isn't so good. The sci-fi action shonen elements that I could take or leave that. It's the CSI type um, crime drama that Ray really, really excels at. And so, yes, I give it my wholehearted recommendation. I'm also pretty sure it's Ganga season two. Yeah, it is getting a it season is. two. Yeah, yeah. Also, the end credits are the best of the year. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> no argument there. We sang it at Anime Fest. We sang it very horribly in a car at Anime Fest. Yeah. <laughs> I clearly, oh. I missed that one. Yeah. Um, this next one's going to be hard to talk about. You may recall. You Take may recall time. when I did the episode on this proper. When it came to talking about this actor, I froze up. Um, I had to take a few minutes, and Andrew just had to basically let me uh, basically carry on the rest of the episode for me because I couldn't accurately describe how it made me feel. And um, I'm going to try it this time. As someone, as someone who went through school being heavily bullied, picked on a lot, ostracized, and as someone who has gone through periods 
to where you want you just want to go to sleep and pray to God that you don't wake up the next morning. That is how much Robbie Damon's performance meant to me. Um, I can't really say much. I'm already falling apart, but it's just... I. It, this has been my pick for best male performance in a drama since the beginning of the year, and nothing is, is unsetting it. It is the most powerful performance in a film, and from such a powerful film that I have seen in in so long and uh, that's all I really have to say is easily my my pick is Robbie Damon in a silent voice that's all thank you for, thank you very much for the party you did great mm-hmm. oh yeah. whew. now I'm starting to like tear <sighs> up too god yeah I'm trying okay, to dude, sorry need, yeah. I'm good you need a minute or... no yeah, are you I'm good, good. I just, you it... need a second to get a drink I know I trust me I got really heavy last no, second. I'm so. finally I'm glad I was finally able to actually speak my mind about that because I wasn't able to on the episode proper. So but uh but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Okay. We're good. Goose Frava. Alright, Megan, your awards for best performance in a drama for male. male I'm with him though that Robbie Damon was like also on my my short list for like the whole fucking year like legitimately as well um but mine are these are both to me by far my favorite performances of these two actors and they do a lot of stuff that i really like especially my silver medal uh has done so many anime that i love and i love hearing him in so many things and he's been in a lot of stuff this year like uh, when we were putting together the uh, the viewer's choice, I jokingly called it that we were going to have a murder bowl over this actor for which one of his performances was going to make it onto the list. My silver medal for... And Hardy's going to have to help me pronounce the last part okay. of this. <laughs> um, my silver medal goes to Ian Sinclair as Yang Wenlei in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Dinu yeah, Tessa. Dinoya Tessa. Dinoya Tessa. Um, this is, a, I never thought Ian Sinclair was going to play Yang, to play Yang, Yang, Yang. Yang Wenli. Yang as, Yang Wenli, shut the fuck up. Um, he, when you think of Ian Sinclair, you think of probably what a lot of people had as their favorite Ian this year of, um, the immortal Sugimoto. These loud, bombastic characters who... May or may not sumo wrestle under the effects of honor. <laughs> nice. In the world, in the sexiest scene in anime in all of 2018, uh, you too can get high as fuck on honor meat. Um, and, and smack them bara titties. Um, I've just worked the term bara titties into an episode. Good job. I hope you're proud of yourself. I'm, I am very. You know who doesn't have bara titties though? Yang. Yang. <laughs> Ian's just performance more. as this <laughs> Ian's performance as this character is so charismatic and enrapturing in a show that has a cast that is almost not heard of. Um, just but for me the the moment that set it in is during is the ending. Uh, and again, spoiler: the ending of the Battle of uh, Izalor. For those of you who've not seen it. And uh, specifically, I went looking for this clip for the uh, Viewer's Choice video where he goes, uh, the heart of a warrior, I've had yes. my fill of men like these. I love that moment. And it's just such this moment where Ian just, where you can tell that Yang is at his angriest. And yet this man never raises his voice beyond being the guy who is... uh, uh speak softly but carry a large stick as a pacifist and it's just so captivating for a show that is in itself um despite being again a reboot of a show from i believe the 80s and the novels are from the 70s a show that is almost terrifyingly poignant to to current day politics and to hear ian in this is just like you kind of can't believe that the, this guy who is known for being big, dumb comedy characters and manly men is playing a a 
the world's most lost millennial. Um, but I almost put this gen. I mentioned in the comedy segment that I almost put this this gentleman who got my gold award in the comedy segment, and he very much can fit in in that comedy segment. But the absolute drama and layers to this character are they're good in Japanese, and it is rare that for this particular seiyu, I prefer his English voice 100% over the Japanese performance. I am not kidding you in that I said the words, if KG Tang does not get on the Viewer's Choice Awards, I will fight all of you myself. Ah, <laughs> yes. I would fight a bitch. Holy actual shit, guys. How many of you at the beginning of this year when you heard that Bungo Stray Dogs was getting a dub thought KG Tang was going to be Osamu Dazai? No one. If you said yes, you're high and a liar. <laughs> um, you're actually a liar. I don't fucking believe you. Except for you, KG, because you knew when we didn't. KG's performance as Dazai is, yes, when it's funny, it's funny. When it's doofy, it's doofy. When he is making Patrick Seitz want to shove his head up his own asshole, it is there. <laughs> I want you to go watch the first three episodes. Is it three episodes or four uh, episodes? Of the, the, Oda the Oda Saku arc. The Saku, Saku arc, arc is four it's three episodes. episodes right? Yeah, four episodes. So it's, I want you to go watch, even as a standalone, because it is in fact a prequel to the actual rest yeah. of the series, the Otisaku arc from Boon Goes Stray Dogs 2 and tell me that Keiji Tang is a bad actor because you're also a fucking liar. You are. you are a liar. I am not kidding you in that that scene in the alleyway where he taunts the gunman Ooh. made me hard. <laughs> and I don't know how to be this. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's that good. <laughs> You broke the couple. <laughs> Two for the price of one, baby! <laughs> Megan, I fucking love you, you crazy, crazy person, but you're right. <laughs> oh, God. KG Tang's performance as Dazai is orgasmically good. <laughs> I, I am gonna bring this up because if you don't know what my best job of the year is, you're a Fucking liar! How are you um, a liar? <laughs> we've compared. If you doubted me on what my favorite dub of the year is, you're insane. We've done a lot of like comparing really good roles to Mamoru Miyanu this year. I find that fascinating. That's great. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I was expect. I love you, KG. I know you did really good as Popo last year. I didn't think this was gonna work. Um, Surprise! You were doing yourself a disservice by not listening. To Keiji's take on Dazai. Not only is the only Otisaku are good, um, his work in season two of that series is great. The just this character that he plays, like, I cannot say enough good. Go watch the fucking show. Oh, uh, but Keiji, I'm gonna have a really hard time looking you in the eye after that hard comment. <laughs> But you're really you just good. You did that to yourself. You know you dug your hole. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Building up to it, and God damn it, I respect that. <laughs> ah, all right. Whenever we make a best of the dubbies, that's going on there, is it? Probably. Highlight video. I'm sorry. That scene w is so. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. What is it that he says in that line? What was it? Won't you wake me from this oxidizing yes! dream? And I'm just sitting there like, oh, God, between KG and Lucian. Jesus, fuck. All right, Megan. <laughs> okay. You're done right. good. You, do you need to call a shower now? <laughs> I feel like I've just got, I just want to gamble on a cocky career. Somebody can yeah. a cigarette. No, Megan right now needs the hose from Galactic Heroes, where it's just Yang just gets hosed hard. And just Yang, it's, first of all, one, it's a sprinkler system. And two, he uses it to fight off Nazis. Oh, God. But yes, Hardy, I will take that <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are you good? Are you good? Yes. Yes. I'm good. I'm alive. <laughs> okay. So if this is your first time listening to the W Awards, 
please stay around. I promise we're good people. Not yeah. that. But also, it, it, for some reason, best male performance in a drama, for me, personally, is the most difficult fucking category to me. And for those who have come and listened to the W's before, you know that it is the most difficult fucking category for me to figure out. So, I kept this as a list. <laughs> and I, uh, before I narrowed this down the other night, I had 18 possible contenders for this fucking award. S Lilac is the ultimate reversed harem <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and it's a bunch of people that you would probably f expect. Like, I have... Did, did you don't say everybody who did make No, it. I know. I mean, like, I have a couple of my heroes, a couple of Gridmans, Devilman, Steins Gate <coughs> in here, Devil's Line, a variety of stuff in here. But it took a bit to narrow it down. But the end result was when we got to, I think, four left, I think it was, that the question was asked... What did I like about these performances? The two who actually made it in here, the reason, like, the highlight of the performances, I should say. I liked everything about these performances. And it just, once that kind of set in, it was like, okay, there's no other options here. If I liked everything, it has to be these two. My silver award for best performance in a drama this gentleman was a contender last year for the same category, actually. He did not make it at the time. But with everything that he did with this show, as controversial as a show it was to some people in the community, I think his work on it was outstanding. For a character who's just f trying to find his wings once again. I have to give Matt Shipman props for his role as hero from Darling of the Franks. It's a fantastic portrayal of an interesting character that is just learning to grow up little by little. And try and find himself in this world where realistically... If he doesn't have a purpose, he's not wanted or needed anymore. So, seeing the progression of this character over the course of 24, 26 episodes was just fantastic to me. And I loved every second of it. So, yeah, props to Matt for this character and this performance. Megan is laughing in the corner. <laughs> I know what she this knows is! what my gold is going to be. <laughs> It's so good! You were hard, too! <laughs> it's okay, honey. You can be hard for this one. <laughs> Thank you. I've allowed one. Thank you. <laughs> so, everybody everybody ride that does a dick. <laughs> so, in case you couldn't tell, uh, my gold winner for best performance in a for male for in drama, it, it's... It's something to be said both with this one as well as Matt. When these two are the ones that immediately came into mind and stuck with me since the beginning of the year. Keiji Tang is Dazai in Bungo Stray Dogs. Holy shit. It's Keiji Tang. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> what? Ah! No. Like, every aspect of this character is just bombastic and crazy. And we didn't know how this was gonna go at the time like Megan was saying we're like we're not sure that this is gonna work how, how are we gonna feel about it and then you just let him go for half an hour you just let KG Tang go for half an hour on this character and it's like okay I understand everything now I regret saying terrible things KG Tang is the perfect Dasai <laughs> and it's just oh love every second in front of it the comedic timing he has with those comedic moments the serious moments the way he's able to flip like switch sides very easily and very very easily without a second thought and play this mental game this entire time is just absolutely brilliant so i have to give kg props as dazai for Bungo stray dogs like hands down 
Uh, Andrew, what did the other hosts pick for their best male performance in a drama? Is anybody else hard for KG10? <laughs> We're about to find out. I'll oh say my. this before we go on to this. I feel like he'd appreciate that. I would just like to say that Osamu Dazai makes Lelouch Lamperouge look like a little bitch when it comes to making plans four steps ahead of people. Woo! <laughs> Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? Because <laughs> he, he's brave like Thank you, Eric Andre. Now, as... <laughs> the real one sung hero of 2018 is Eric yeah. fucking Andre. So, as for Noah Clue's pick for best male in a drama, he went with Koi Dao for March Comes In Like a Lion. Koi Dao performed the highs and lows of a struggling teen to the point that I felt the elements of my own life ring too true to bear. Damn you, Shogi! <laughs> I made sure to Thanks. say that like Noah. Thanks, Noah. As for Jet's pick for best male in a drama, he too had KG Tang for Bungo Stray Dogs. When I first watched Bungo Stray Dogs during its simulcast, I was really turned off to Dazai by how phoned in Mamoru Miyano's performance felt compared to a lot of his other roles, and its delivery mostly served to make the character feel obnoxious to me. KG Tang, on the other hand, came into this role with a level of intensity that I've honestly never seen from him before and managed to make the shift between Dazai's goofy persona and the cold-blooded ex-hitmen beneath it. It felt extremely believable and improved my opinion of the character significantly. This is easily my favorite performance KG Tang has ever given and it grew into my favorite dub performance of the year. So yes, our good buddy Jet 2 is hard for KG Tang. <laughs> Yay! As for Roots of Justice pick for best male in a drama, he had Kyle McCarley for Devil Man Crybaby. Kyle McCarley's performance as Ryo drips in a rare kind of charisma that you know something is up with this character from the beginning, and by the time you figure it all out, he's roped you in like he roped in Akira. It's dripping with deliciously sinister undertones and an odd tragedy that hits and doesn't relent. As for Gigi's pick for best male in a drama, she had Aaron Dismuke from Legend of the Galactic Heroes, stating, The moment I heard Riotheart speak, I knew I was in trouble. My favorite character trope with one of my favorite voice actors? Rip your girl, Gigi. <laughs> Gigi, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for reading that in Gigi's voice. <laughs> I couldn't not. Now, for my personal chick. My personal chick. <laughs> <laughs> That's Excuse Steph, me? not KG Tang. No, yes. <laughs> yes, you are my personal side ho His side ho stands no. Undertale. <laughs> my actual pick... For best male in a drama is Robbie Damon for mm -hmm. a silent voice. There is no other performance this year that has moved me quite as hard as Robbie's brutal yet honest portrayal of Shoya. It's heartbreaking, it's e it's funny, and it's absolutely brilliant. Amen, brother. Amen. As for Amandul's best, best pick for best male in a drama... He went with Ian Sinclair for Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Ian truly embodies the tired, overworked space millennial that we all can relate to. How did Megan not write this, too? <laughs> As if me and Amon don't have the exact same wavelength of Yama and Lee. Now, Jamal's pick for best male in a drama went to Micah Solusad for Real Life Final Arc. Micah's performance as Arata resonated with me as somebody who can relate to his character's plight very easily. While it wasn't sappy, it was very sentimental. And Lack the Watcher's pick for best male in the drama uh, is one Christopher Sabat for My Hero Academia. See, I also had Chris Sabat. He was a shoe in for a while, but then when I thought about it, I'm like, nah. <laughs> but, um... We could go with, if we wanted to make the show, like, six hours long, we would Let's add not. bronze medals, so <laughs> yeah. we need to keep going. We would have to add... It's only 21 minutes till New Year. We'd have to add, like, a bunch of medals for my 18, <clears throat> for my 18 contenders on that category. All right. 
Let me now list off in every single way, shape, and form of every male performance I like this year. <laughs> right. yeah, speaking so, of male performances, though. Hardy, yes. would you be so kind as to present our next... Who gives our viewers the horror? God the damn it, no. Would you be so kind as to present our next viewers' choice category, please? Yes, the next category is for best actor. We have 10 striking gentlemen who put forth an excellent effort this year, and here is who they are. Koi Dao for Marge Comes In Like a Lion, Robbie Damon for A Silent Voice, Ben Diskin for A Gretzko, Rico Fajardo for Zombieland Saga, Kyle McCarley for Devilman Crybaby, Dallas Reed for Angels of Death, Matt Shipman for Darling in the Franks, Ian Sinclair for Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Dinoya Tessa, KG Tang for Bungo Stray Dogs, and David Wald for Mr. Tonegawa's Middle Management Blues. And the winner of the Viewer's Choice Award for Best Male Actor is... Drum roll noises, drum roll noises, drum roll noises, drum roll noises, drum roll noises. Robbie Damon for A Silent Voice. Congratulations. congratulations. Yes, congratulations to Robbie for an excellent performance, and hopefully we'll get to hear you on Blu-ray soon. I would love to. Oh, I thank God, love- please. I want to oh, show my mom please, this movie. I want to this on Blu-ray. Are you serious? I only saw the Japanese. Anyway, our next award, instead of singling out one individual for an acting award, we're going to be talking about the best ensemble cast for an English dub. Uh, this is, goes to a cast of characters and a, a bunch of actors uh, who stuck out in our minds for an English dub f- over the course of the year. Hardy, would you like to go first with your awards, please? Let's see, for ensemble? Yes, sir. Sure thing. Yes. Um, I kind of feel like I'm cheating a little bit with my silver award because I kind of sort of gave it to an earlier rendition of this show last year. But I figure... Every time a new JoJo's art comes out, it's always up for de- up for debate. So for Silver, I'm going with Diamond is Unbreakable. Uh, I've really enjoyed what I've seen on to- on uh, airing on Adult Swim so far. Uh, like I said, Billy Kamitz is a great Josuke. Um, and it's actually turned my opinion of Zach Aguilar as an actor around quite a bit because uh, his... What is his name? Um, uh... Koichi. His Koichi, Koichi is very fun and energetic to listen to. Uh, Koichi, a.k.a. Speedwagon's yeah. Mrs. Sperm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. But what I picked for gold, I have to set up a little bit. A good dub and a good cast that works well together can almost feel like a family. Especially when you have a long-running show and... When you have when that show is dubbed well and everything works together, it's like a finely tuned machine, and you can grow attached to these characters and these actors who play them, and to work to the point to where taking just any one character out or replacing any one character feels like a big detriment. Like this only works when all the proper pieces are in place, and for a good long while. We weren't able to listen to this family, but just within the past few months, they've come back to us and it feels, everything feels just right all over again. You know where I'm going with this. Oh, best ensemble, best ensemble cast. I'm giving it to fairy tale final season. Well, I had my word set out, but Hardy just made me think about something with Uh-oh. the setup. I really want to give my silver to what might actually be one of the most insane casts ever with Galactic Heroes, Dano and Tessa. But I have, I know I said my rule about no sequels. I know I said that. But Hardy is right about family. Sometime a family is 60 fucking swords. <laughs> ah, yes! Please, yay! <laughs> I have to give my civil medal to Zoken Tokuron Tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck Jade does to get half of these people, but she legitimately has 60 different people. None of them are double cast. I love my 60 children. Dallas, Garrett, Jason, every single fucking Chris that isn't named Eric Vale. 
Um, from actors you don't even hear do other shows. I love you, Dino Tessa, but I love my 60 sons. <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. Yeah, why are you sorry? Who would win? An entire because Space Fleet the- Armada, 60 gay swords. <laughs> 60 gay swords. <laughs> there you go. That's who there wins. You go. 60 gay swords with my preferred cast. It feels fitting that the swords get the silver. I can't not give the gold to this show. Because... <laughs> I don't know who this man, how this man had to lure these people in. If they begged him, man, pop team up because a cast that shouldn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, pop team epic's dub is actually fucking nuts. It's nothing futz. Um, I mean, I mean, let's just say this: Sean Shemmel, Michael Sticker Nicholas. Matt, uh, Matt Mercer, Michael Solisod, Emily Neves, Jessica Calvello, Stephanie Shea, Allison Victorin. Uh, that's not even counting some people who. They have Joel McDonald come voice the fucking initial <laughs> yes. joke. I got to listen to David Wald and Alejandro Saab badly sing Earth, Wind, and Fire. I, I mean, if you, I, I don't care what you think about Pop Team Epic as a show. You can think Pop Team Epic is the dumbest thing on earth, or you can accept that that it is actually the. It's not even a shit post anime. It's just good. Hating um, Pop Team Epic only makes it stronger. <laughs> stronger. <laughs> it wants you to hate it. What does it kill? Yes. It. It. It's just you know what you can just go fuck off if you hate. Just <laughs> like in the words of. Uh, like, I think even the adaptive lyrics of the Let's Pop Together even talk about, like, watching it because you hate it because you're an idiot. Um, but man, it just a, a huge shout out to Chris George uh, for getting this put together. I don't know, but just, it's a murder's row of actors. And if they make a pop team epic too, just let Rachel Robinson be one of the Pope Goes or Peep Me's. Just let her have it, guys. Yeah. She deserves it so very much. Come on, Chubbs. <laughs> Do her a solid. All right. So my awards for Best Ensemble Cast. Um, I kind of went out of the box for them a little bit. And I say a little bit because my gold choice, maybe not so much, but it's probably also what you expect from me. So my silver award for Best Ensemble goes to a show that's just a whole bunch of comfy fun with rival Ins, if you can believe it. Aww! Just a bunch of comfy fun with food and yokai for all. Or Ayakashi, excuse me, for all. I'm going to give my silver award for best ensemble to Kakura Yoben Breakfast for Spirits. Including Damon Mills, the big red dog. <laughs> it was it was such a fun show with a cast that had such variety to it and such uniqueness to it. Um that I just fell in love with it so much and it was fantastic and it actually weirdly enough because I was not confident in Emily Neves as an actress and then I watched this and I'm like okay I really love Owie (laughs) I love Emily as Owie it's great so yeah my my silver has to go to Kakadio for best ensemble my gold however and again, controversial pick, potentially. While the show itself is the contra- point of contention for some people, you either love it or you hate it. I'm kind of in the middle about the show itself. However, the thing I loved the most with this show was the cast. While he's not getting my director award for this show, God damn it. Clifford Chapin worked some magic on this one and brought together a fantastic cast for Darling in the Franks. It had such amazing performances from not only Matt and Tia, who already run two of my, my, my two acting awards, but you have Austin Tyndall, you have Brittany Lauda, you have Bryson Boggess, you have um, Jeannie Torado, you have 
Leah Clark, you have Blake Shepard. You have, it's very, it's so much fun. And it made me love these characters and enjoy the show that much more. So because of all that, my gold award for best ensemble has to go to Darling in the Franks. So now that I've done mine, how about how about everybody else? How, what did everybody else do? I'm glad you asked. Um, Noah Clue's choice for best ensemble cast goes to Violet Evergarden. Ooh. Paired with Bob and Megan's dynamic understanding of Violet's world, the whole cast of warriors, writers, and weepers works wonderfully well in this episodic odyssey. For Jet's uh, choice for best ensemble cast, he went with Kake Gurui. This is a series where pretty much every character exists to chew the scenery, and each of the actors really go above and beyond in an effort to outham one another, making for a really delightful experience. I'm going to say the full show title for this, so Hardy, God help me, you're going to need to help me here. Okay. For Roots of Justice's pick for Best Ensemble Cast, he went with Legend of the Galactic Heroes... Dinoya De- Tessa. Dinoya Tessa. Yes. A show I didn't expect to get a dub at all ends up with a spectacular cavalcade of actors to round out an already massive cast. Gigi's pick for best ensemble cast is Magical Girl Raising Project. Most of the doves I loved this year had very strong ensembles as opposed to one or two starring performances, but Magical Girl Raising Project won the prize for me. Without a single male actor, these ladies stole the show with their range of voices, almost all of them pulling double duty as well, from the cool, sultry tones of Winter Prison to the insane southern accent of Calamity Mary, to the letter-perfect Sundari trope of Ripple, this cast literally has it all, and I was very, very, very sad to see it end. My personal pick for Best Ensemble Cast went to Golden Kamoy. You would. Kamoy is a cast of colorful weirdos and charming, psychotic characters, and every voice actor in this cast is giving their all and sounds like they're having the time of their life. As for Amandul, he too went with Pop Team Epic. A murderous row of actors from Funimation and elsewhere being given the licenses to be as weird and wild as possible. A once in a lifetime ensemble, at least until season two happens. Jamal's pick for best ensemble cast is Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Dinoya Tessa. Did I get it right? Yes. Thank you. Bravo. A mixture of performances ranging from old to new actors, from Texas to LA to New York, in ways I've never seen them before, provided death to this reboot of this beloved franchise. And Lack the Watcher's pick for best ensemble cast is Violet Evergarden. Okay. Now, time for our next viewer's choice category and one of our new awards as well. So we added a couple of new viewers' choice categories this year for the fans to vote on. This one is for best returning actor. So it's a multi-gender category. So it's both male and females. um, With performances for series that... For sequel and... For sequel, reboot, prequel series um, that has come up through this... Mostly, Mostly sequels. sequels, because there's a couple of reboots that got in the mix for category, it's Ian. True. <laughs> but mostly sequels. Ian. It's basically <laughs> a bunch of returning actors and actresses for various performances throughout the year. And to remind you what who your nominees were, we had Bryn April for Attack on Titan, Chris Guerrero for Overlord 2 and Overlord 3, Hilary Hag for Full Metal Panic and Visible Victory. Brittany Karbowski for A Certain Magical Index, Jeremy Lee for Fairy Tale Final Season, Chris Rager for Star Blazers Space Battleship Yamato 2202, Christopher Sabat for My Hero Academia, J. Michael Tatum for Steins Gate Zero, Austin Tyndall for Tokyo Ghoul Re, and Kari Walgren for Fully Cooly Alternative. And the winner of the best return viewers choice best returning actor award is drumming, 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 drumming. 
let's face it, it's Christopher Sabat from My Hero Academia. Yeah, Woo! crazy. <laughs> 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 Like yeah! in a landslide too. The United States. <laughs> like how bad? United States of Smash. Like, States of Smash. like I think I can speak for everyone when I say that season three basically was the highest point of Sabbath's performance as All Might. Everything leading up to that performance and then the fallout from it is just spot on, and I'm very excited and happy that this award went to such an amazing individual. So congrats to you, Mr. Christopher Sabat. All right. Next category, we are going to be talking about the best writing in a dub. Pretty self-explanatory, I would say. So on that note, Hardy, mm-hmm. what are your, who, who do you, who did you pick for your award winners, sir? As you know, I'm not always the biggest fan of putting memes and, stuff and the like, and slang terms into comedy dubs. However, I can be swayed to appreciate it if it's done well. If you can incorporate slang and memes and that sort of thing into a dub and make it sound, make me laugh, and make it sound to where it does not sound out of place, then you're doing a good job. And for that reason, I have to really commend Leah Clark for Chio School Road, for writing what is one of the funniest scripts I've listened to all year. Because, yes, the memes are there. Yes, the slang is there. But given the context of the characters saying them, they do all make sense, and they don't seem out of place. I would quote one right now, but I have a terrible memory. So let's just say this dub is WTF all the way. Dive head first into the garbage. Yeah, dive head first into the garbage, just like the start of any new anime season. Oh my god. Yeah, it's He's not wrong. Th- I'm not wrong, no. No, you're not. That's the worst part of it. You're not wrong. All right. That was my easy choice. Gold, I will openly admit, I am very biased. Okay. That having been said, this person definitely earned this award. Because I have been wanting... I have been wanting to give this particular person an award since we started this show, and I've never had a chance to. And really? though okay. it may not be for an acting award, which I would prefer, but I will take writing, especially given the job that she put into this particular project. You bet your grits I'm going to give my gold award to Amanda Winley for a silent voice. Yay! Okay. I finally get to talk about her now, and yeah, she did such an incredible job having to work with, um, having to work alongside, adjust the, adjust the text to work alongside actors with disabilities. Um, and yeah, I think she even did a little bit of the direction on the, on the dub as well. And for one of the most powerful films with one of the most heart-wrenching and touching messages that I've seen in years. Um, I've, I, I gotta give it to Amanda Winley. I finally get a chance to give her an award, so I'm going to take it. All right. Mm-hmm. Megan, your awards, please. So this is where everyone's going to call me biased. Um, <laughs> we all have that one. Don't worry. Everyone's going to call me biased for this one. Uh, so my silver medal for writing in a dub, uh, both of the, one of these dubs is, everyone's gonna be like, wait, the fuck? Uh, why are you giving this best writing? There are so many other better series with better writing and da 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 da. But there's something to be said to the amount of effort and research that went into this, uh, the writing of this dub. And for all of you thinking it's Golden Kamui, it's not. Unfortunately, I haven't seen much of Golden as much as I really like the dub. Uh, um, I trust me, I think some of the boys are gonna some of the other boys are gonna get me on this on that one. I I just need to show you a picture of all five of them just butt fucking naked in the sauna <laughs> and it's already in your queue. What? Go watch Golden Convoy. I haven't caught up yet. What the fuck? My silver award for best writing in a dub goes to Caitlin Barr for Angels of Death. Ooh, okay. Mm. The amount of... I'm not kidding you in that she played the game to write the show. They used the manga. They used every material that they could to ensure that the original spirit of the game 
came through in the adaptation of this anime. It has some slang, it has cursing, it also can play up the drama when it needs to, it plays up the creepy aspect. Caitlin knows how to walk a knife's edge of horror, comedy, and drama. I was, she, both her and my gold winner could both win for multiple shows. Caitlin Barr single-handedly turned the writing around on free, thank you. Uh, and she also did an amazing job writing Zombieland Saga. But my gold award for writing goes to a show whose writing is absolutely stunning. That takes a genre that might as well be the hardest one to write in anime to make it sound believable. And that is romance. A lot of romance shows rely on such cliche writing in their original that adapting it into English that flows well is a nigh impossible task, it seems. And this writer could also have won for another romance show that she did, both under the same director. My winner for best writing in an anime is for Marissa Lenti for Bloom Into You. The writing on Bloom Into You is so good that I just encourage you to watch the show. It is poignant and beautiful. It gets to express romantic feelings for two very confused characters without sounding like the same old tired tropes over and over again. I cannot highly recommend Bloom Into You enough. Oh boy. We've had a slight mind meld again. <laughs> I, I say slight. Um. So, my best writing awards. My silver award goes to a script that, for a sequel show, was much improved upon its earlier seasons by leaps and bounds. So... I have to give it to Caitlin Barr for free dive to the future. <laughs> <laughs> yes! So, it's... The writing on for this stays a very, mu very much, much more true to the original, which I feel like in a case like this, it's what you needed. Um, unfortunately, the first couple seasons did not do this. Um, but it's we don't want to point fingers as to why or who. Because um, it could be things out of their control. Let's put it that way. But with Dive to the Future, it gave such a fantastic opportunity to Caitlin to really bring back the reason why people like this show. Why there's such a fandom for this show. And I think the writing did that very, very well. As for my gold choice for best writing... As Megan was saying, romance is, writing for romance is very difficult. Writing for realistic romance is very difficult. Granted, this is not, probably not a realistic romance to an extent, but potentially if you throw in maybe like Starcross Lovers in there, or I don't know, let's say a Japanese kid and a princess, from another country on exchange program who is such a weeb it's hilarious <laughs> weeberella weeberella <laughs> I have to give this my gold award to the team of Marissa Lenti and David Wall for Tata Never Falls in Love it's such a fun it's such a fun romance and the writing on it is just impeccable with such fun jokes um, I mean I think everyone who was involved in the Tata episode was impressed with the dozens of ways um, Scott Gibbs had to say the word boobs. Take old bitties! <laughs> Sweater puppies. And, um... Bosom. Globular clusters. <laughs> no, that was... Oh, God. The, the, uh, Hardy, I'm not kidding you that the stars one with Ian is fucking hysterical. You will cry. Nice. Yeah, it was... The script... The writing on this show is just beautiful and it made me fall in love with the show all over again so i had to give my gold award to marissa and david for tata never falls in love now andrew what about the other hosts what are their winners for best writing in a dub for noah clue's pick for best writing he picked 
Marissa Lenti for Bloom Into You. Subtle nuances of romance are so often lost, even in real life, but by Marissa's caring pen, the eccentricities of this high school drama convey every shred of emotional complexity. I said the word eccentricities right. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, for Jet's pick for best writing in a dub, he had Jalen K. Cassell for Diamond is Unbreakable. It was a toss-up between this and Battle in Egypt, but I appreciate the way Jalen's script has managed to throw in a few subtle 90s references and punched up some of the dialogue while still remain retaining all the goofy charm and sincerity that makes JoJo so appealing. For the love of God, drop the meat! <laughs> Diamond is a breakable as a treat. Uh, Roots of Justice's pick for best writing is... Kyle Colby Jones and Marta Bechtel for Mr. Tonegawa Middle Management Blues. Slapstick comedy sometimes has a rather difficult cultural barrier to overcome, and that's only the first hurdle Mr. Tonegawa has to clear in its path to getting an English dub. It also had to maintain homages to an anime that doesn't have a dub of its own yet, at the same time stand by itself until such a dub could be produced. Kyle Colby Jones and Marta Bechtel have taken some rather difficult circumstances with the franchise it's attached to and written a dub that stands even among the gag comedy greats of Houston's ADV era. Gigi has Marissa Lenti for This Boy is a Professional Wizard. The pinnacle of good dub adaptation is to take an anime I disliked in the sub because I couldn't understand the story and to turn it into something I loved once it was written in English. Marissa wrote the scripts for the short series with such care and human emotion that it was easy to see the love between the two main characters in the dub. While in the Japanese, I didn't get the connection at all. Plus, she keeps part of the dialogue very cute and current, which made me enjoy it even more. I can't wait to see more of this boy series become- oh my god, there's more. Become adapted. Okay, just a one more word. <laughs> just, it's one more word. You're uh, okay. As for my own personal pick, I would like to clarify that I actually had this one pretty cemented for a while. I was pretty convinced this one was going to be uh, Erica Mendez and Christian Lamont for Dragon Pilot. But then Marissa Lenti came along and did Tana Never Falls in Love. Yay! Several strong skip scripts throughout this year, but Marissa's work on Tata is absolutely delightful, witty, emotional, and hilarious. The amount of wordplay and hilarious lines of dialogue are absolute treat. Hashtag... Sweater puppies. Really? Really? You added a hashtag joke in here. I added a fucking hashtag. Oh my god, why? Also, that's our comments. If you've gotten through this episode, put hashtag sweater puppies. No, it is not. <laughs> it is because I said so. Nope. As nope. for Amon Duel's pick for best writing, he went with Clint Bickham and Jessica Kavanaugh for Golden Kamoy. Bickham and Kavanaugh's writing do an excellent job capturing the show's drama, humor, and general strangeness while also doing a fantastic job incorporating, incorporating the Ainu language. Just superb all around. Jamal's pick for best writing goes to Kristen McGuire for Magical Girl Raising Project. Kristen poured her heart and soul into this show, shedding tears as a result, and it really shows in the end product. If I ever meet her face to face one day, I want to give her a hug. And Lack the Watcher's Air's pick for best writing goes to Violet Evergarden. Okay. All right. Now for a best director awards. For, again, self-explanatory category. Uh, best directing for a dub for the year. Hardy. Yes. Can you go first? Who are your award winners for best director? Well, for Silver, I know that... This was my lock for the longest time. Um, in fact, both of these dubs I've had my director locked down for the better part of the year now. Um, as for my silver choice, once again, I know that this isn't the most popular show out there. It's a very controversial show. But, and I, I think that among our group, more people, more of us were leaning towards... Gridman, 
But for me, the superior Clifford Chapin dub this year is still Darling in the Franks. I'm going to uh, fucking fight you on that. Oh, uh, God. You're, you're going to lose. But um, but no, I just think Gridman was a great show. It, uh, Gridman's more enjoyable show than Darling is. But I just like the chemistry and the direction and and just the overall cast more in Franks than I did in Gridman. That's just me personally. Okay. So, That's fair. That's so fair. Clifford gets my silver award. For my gold, there is one phrase going through early 2018 that we, every single week, one of us, sometimes me, sometimes one of the others, maybe Megan or, or such, would go into the private dub talk chat and utter this phrase verbatim. Chris George is a madman. <laughs> yep. Yay! Yep. That's an it. That's an exact thing that we say. That is the same every, thing we said every week. Every single week, a new dubbed episode of Pop Team Epic would come out and absolutely blow our minds. And I don't know how he did it. I don't know if he gradually went insane working on it, but <laughs> every yeah. episode made him stronger. Yeah, every single episode that came out just got weirder and weirder and and just, yeah, Chris George is a trooper and I think he might be slightly insane for having done this um, because he was doing this at the same time as Black Clover, so he kind of probably used it as an, F, as a, uh, as an excuse to sort of unwind after listening to Asta screaming 90% of the time. I but don't yeah. the way I don't think you like the way I I'm saying that your dubbing sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, that's the greatest fuck you of all time. <laughs> but yeah, no, just easily hands down, my favorite director of this year was definitely Chris George for Pop Team. Thank you, Hardy, for stealing one of my awards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so my silver award is actually I actually was my heart of hearts. I had it between two women, and I was like, I really want to do one, but my heart is telling me to do the other. Um, I want to give an award for somebody who actually broke, uh, who actually was the one this, at least in the time of this dubbing period, uh, was the one to, you know what? This was in the year of anime 2018. And uh, who better off... Uh, I think for me, giving my, my dub to this director for their work was the, the right thing to do in my heart. My silver award for best director is Brittany Lauda for I Know Kusabi. Okay. Nice. Uh, I Know Kusabi is a show that it has a really, really good dub. I swear to God to you. And it has a cast that I actually can't believe is real either. Uh, it was also in my shortlist for best ensemble, if you can believe it. Um, starring the likes of Bryson Vegas, Rico Fajardo, Matt Shipman, uh, Tyson Reinhardt, uh, Todd Haberkorn, who in the bloopers sings, uh, I don't want to lose your love tonight. <laughs> um, I don't make the TSA rule, kids. I just enforce them. Uh, Jacob Browning is every man in a gay bar. Um, and an unknown named, uh, Darren Mitchell, who all take this sci uh, Michael Zex, who I'd be remiss to not mention him, and he was also on my shortlist for voice actor to watch. Um, I would be remiss not to mention him. I think Brittany Lauda did such an amazing job on that dub for a, a show that was long forgotten to the to, to the to the bowels of time, um, and gave it a, an, a solid dub for a media blaster show. Like, who thought that would ever happen? Surprise! Um, it's honestly, I knew Kasabi is a show that will make probably a lot of people very uncomfortable. It is the dub is worth checking out. It is fantastic. I, I think like Keith Silverstein's in that fucking show. Like, how Maybe? the fuck did you do that, child? No, he is. He is. If I'm right, he is. Gigi would. Gigi will correct me in the comments. But Hardy, you motherfucker. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> took my gold award, and he honestly kind of took the words out of my mouth. I could have given this to any of the shows that he worked on this year. Whether it be Darling in the Franks, <laughs> Ch uh, Chio School Road, uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, uh, Dyn Dinoia Tessa. Dinoia Tessa with Brittany Lauda's help, mostly Brittany Lauda's help. Uh, this time I got reincarnated as a slime. Um, 
I guess the Silver Guardian too. Oh, yeah, that, that did happen, didn't it? <laughs> it did happen. That did you happen. <laughs> that was a thing that happened this year. Shut uh, the fuck up. <laughs> but for me, I have to give it to what I think is his crowning opus as a director. Um, I have to give it to Clifford Chapin. He is the one director this year I think had absolutely nearly flawless dubs across the board. And that's saying something. And he also does it with some of the most diverse casting there is. Because um, I don't think you ever, like, I, w I want you to raise your hand if you ever thought Tia Ballard and Matt Shipman would play a lead uh, in, a, in, a, in a dramedy romance, a drama romance show. Dramedy. Or... Dramedy. <laughs> Oh yes, come on! The ending of Darling in the Fr is full of humor, ladies and gentlemen. The letter, I mean, have you the seen the ending? Is fucking hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen the ending to Darling in the Franks? It's, it's a, a laugh joke. riot. It is it's a laugh joke. Riot. Um, all I want to do is see you turn into a giant, giant woman. woman. Giant, giant woman. woman. That's all I want to do. Want to do. Is someone that gets to see, see a giant woman. Please don't but, sue like, us, Cartoon Network. <laughs> Please don't sue us, Rebecca Sugar. Don't kill me, Cliff. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like, I, I specifically highlight Frank's because I think Frank's has by far the total package from him as a director. Great casting, uh, enthusiasm, pushing his actors to the limit, uh, pushing the writing to the limit. The mix is great. Um, I think Clifford Chapin in, uh, included it all in that dub, and it is the superior trigger dub. That came out this year. Don't fight. You can at me. Wait, I'll wait, fight wait. you, Spaceman Hardy. Are we talking Franks or Gridman? Gridman? You said Franks. You said Franks. I meant Gridman. Okay. Shut up. You heard nothing. That makes a lot more, that makes a lot <laughs> more like, sense. Like, wait you've, been going a second. This, you've been going this long without actually saying the title of the show. I was getting very confused. It's Gridman. Gridman is the only trigger anime that came out this year. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Stuff, go ahead. Okay. Um, more mind melds going on here. Oh boy. Except, not in the way you expect it. I can't believe Steph's going to give Clifford Chapin an award for the Silver Guardian 2. No! No, 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 no. Somebody no. had to, said Stephanie. <laughs> Shut your poor mouth right now. Anyway, so, my Silver Award goes to a show that I honestly didn't expect to be a thing I enjoyed. <laughs> and for um, someone who's not as versed in sci-fi as I am, who's not as versed probably in political drama as I am, I'm going to give my silver award to the team of Clifford Chapin and Brittany Lauda for Legend of the Galactic Heroes de Noi Tese. Um, it is... It's a fun, diverse cast with so much intensity and drama to it that I was just on the edge of my seat the entire time, and it was just absolutely brilliant um, in all in all aspects. But I I think a, definitely the directing is where I think it really shines to me. Um, so much so that I almost like two of my front runners for my drama my best male for drama were actually Aaron Dismuke and Clifford Chapin um, for Reinhardt and Kierscheitz. But, um, my goal lord for best director in probably one of the most surprising moments of the year is when we found out that this individual has started directing shows much, much more. And while I haven't seen a couple of them, nor finished the some of them. I did finish this one, and it made me very, very happy. I'm gonna give my gold award for best director to David Wald for Tata Never Falls in Love. The show, yeah, I. Uh, it's a show. If you listen to the episode, it's Tata. If you is make it through the episode without dying, holy shit, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, good job, us. Tata is a show that. I loved watching in the simulcast, and I wished Sendai had made the decision to do a dub cast for that one instead of the ones that they did go with. And going through the show again with the English dub was just was such a fun experience for me. And seeing 
such an interesting and diverse casting in the performances out of the show. I have to give credit where credit is due to David Wald for this one. And it's just absolutely brilliant with with the performances and the casting, but not only that, there's a lot of accent work and it's really specific intricities that go into this, that one, that's one of those things where it's like, if you take the wrong step, you're gonna just fall flat on your face. And with a comedy like this, it, it there was a lot of attention to detail to it and I just really appreciate all the work that David Walt did on this one. All right. All right, Andrew, so as for the other hosts, what do we have for best director? All righty. As for our other direct, other directors, we're all directors in our own heart, of our own lives. Uh, Noah Clue's pick for best director goes to Wendy Lee for March Comes in Like a Lion. The range of broken characters is both varied and fascinating, all well encapsulated by the amazing in cast led by Miss Valentine herself. Uh, Jet's pick for Best Director goes to Tony Oliver for Stardust Crusaders Battle in Egypt. While I questioned if Tony Oliver was a good fit for JoJo during the first half of Stardust, he really ramped up the vocal direction for the Battle of Egypt arc, and the last few episodes in particular managed to bring out a level of intensity from the actors that even outshines some of the best stuff from Season 1. Tony Oliver's managed to go from a director I was kind of mixed on to one of my absolute favorites, and his work on this dub played a big part in changing that. Roots of Justice's pick for Best Director goes to Jeremy Inman for Golden Kamoy. It takes a lot to dub a series into English and even more to add in a language you may not be entirely familiar with. Trying to dub a show into English while incorporating dying language into the material is a feat in and of itself. Jeremy Inman handles the challenges of the materials, definitely crafting one of Funimation's best dubs of the year. Gigi's pick for best director is David Wald for Hitorijime, my hero. David Wald Love is here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to get a voice for this. <clears throat> oh no, okay, no. I gotta put my water down for this. So, the Fun Police and the Dilf Whisperer has now become our Rainbow Overlord, and I couldn't be more proud. This was a Difficult project to adapt because of the questionable scenarios and some not-so-nice characters in the anime, but DW did a tremendous job in making each character feel and sound very human. I've never heard a performance from Austin Tyndall that I liked more, and the one pulled from David Matranga literally broke me on multiple occasions. Thank you for your quest to give more worthy LGBTQ anime dubs. You are truly the voice the community needs. Yay! As for me, my pick for Best Director of the Year goes to Stephanie Shea for A Silent Voice. The casting, direction, and emotion on display throughout all of A Silent Voice is worthy of praise in and of itself, and Stephanie Shea, as well as her crew at NYAV, deserve much respect for the choices they made. Amon Duel's pick for Best Director of the Year goes to Jeremy Inman for Golden Kamoy. Like Bickham and Kavanaugh on the writing, Inman blends the various elements of the show together really well and ensures that the show's many tones complement each other rather than clash. He makes what is certainly a very difficult job appear so easy and effortless. I'm almost jealous. Jamal's pick for Best Director goes to Jade Sexton. Or Magical Girl Racing Project. Jade's casting and direction is one of the strongest I've seen, taking a unique core cast of actresses and making them very distinct from each other in two different settings while balancing the dramatic and thriller aspects the show provides. And Lack the Watcher's pick for Best Director goes to Tabitha Ray and Kyle Phillips for Hanabato. Do you want to do a little bit more? A little bit more work? I'm more re and ready to do a little All more work. Right. We've come this far. Minus so one. can you? So Andrew, can you do me a solid and present the next viewer's choice category, please? Our next viewer's choice award category is a brand new one as far as viewer's choice categories. Ironically, it's the one you read for the nomination video too. Actually, <laughs> fancy that. Fancy that. This is for the sequel dub of the year, which is basically a dub that was released this year of a 
current season of a long runner or a old favorite returning once more. The nominees are Attack on Titan Season 3, Fairy Tale Final Season, Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders Battle in Egypt, My Hero Academia Season 3, Star Blazers Space Battleship Yamato 2202, Steins Gate Zero, The Seven Deadly Sins, Revival of the Commandments, Tokyo Ghoul Re, and Zoku Token Ranbu Hanamaru. Those are all I know what won mouthful. in my heart. I know what won in my heart. All right. Drum roll, please. And the winner is My Hero Academia. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Congratulations are in order to My Hero Academia Season 3 for winning our Viewer's Choice Award for Sequel Dub of the Year. Yay! All right. So we have Whoa, we're halfway there. We're down to we're down to two more awards, one of which is a viewer's choice award. Uh but first we're gonna be talking about our own dub of the year. The best of the best that we found from the year. The creme de la creme of anime dubbing in twenty eighteen. Oui, the um, anime that gets the big Tolboro. <laughs> <laughs> so if for those who if, if this is your first time watching the W Awards, uh, last year, we, because in years past, we've actually had two separate categories. Um, one for best dub for home video release, and one for broadcast dub. The decision was made at, that after next last year's uh, W Awards, that the, co- that the category would be made into one category, and we would just have a single dub of the year. So this can go for anything. So any broadcast dubs, any home video releases, sequels, reboots, prequels, anything that premiered as a dub in 2018. Now, Hardy, Mm -hmm. would you please kick us off with your winners for your dub of the year? This one was actually pretty darn easy. Mm -hmm. Um, With the exception of the silver, because I had two dubs, both wildly different for each other fighting over the second place spot. And for the longest time, for the longest time, it was going to be Darling and the Franks. Then I went and sat down and thought about it. What should my other... But but comparing it between it and my other choice that I was debating. And I thought to myself, sure, Darling and the Franks is a really good dub. It is well directed. It's well acted. It sounds really good. It's well mixed. At the same time, though, it's just a traditional show. Why not spruce things up this year, at least in the second place category, with something that no one has ever seen before, something that's like nothing else out there? Why not Why not throw them a curveball? And that curveball comes in the shape of of two awful demon little girls (laughs) destroying anime every single week. God bless. So, yes, my second favorite dub of the entire year of our Lord 2018 is Pop Team Epic. Hardy. I can only say, I can only say, what, what, I know what you're going to say. I know, you know what I'm about to ask you. Can I ask you? You may ask me. Okay, Hardy. Yes? Are you upset? I am not upset. Are you upset? I am not upset. Beef or chicken? Beef. Beef or chicken? Beef. Your life has been spared. (laughs) Also, Hardy, just because I feel this is the most appropriate it will ever be, now is the actual correct time for you to do your darling pop team song thingy. Are you are you upset? I'm not upset. Oh my Look, god. He was debating between the two shows and it's I literally have my good. hands up praising the sun. <laughs> god The sun me. is an angry little girl but, that's going to tell me my life is gonna end thirty minutes from now. But but, but before we go go on, just how epic 
Comic-Con, the, you know, has Pop Team Epic been this year? This is a show that debuted on seven different streaming channels. Yeah. That had its dub come out, had its home DVD release come out, aired on Toonami twice, and had yep. its manga come out in full within one single year. Yeah. And this proves once and for all that all of us, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, we are all still thinking about Hellshake Yano. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, but that's only my silver. That's only my second favorite dub. Okay. And this was the easiest decision I made for this year. Easiest. And I've had it written down, and it has been set in stone since... January. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I brought this up in the episode where I covered it. A Silent Voice is one of the most powerful movies I have ever seen in my life. I watched it in Japanese, and I watched it in English. As to what track is I prefer, the English one really struck me. From Robbie Damon's incredibly relatable and moving performance to Lexi Cowden uh, being able to provide a voice for a character for a deaf character that 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 she can represent uh, to uh, what is it um, Kira Buckland just being having a chance to just go absolute visceral and and just spew just so much anger and hate this was a dub that just moved me so much. And I know this is, I, I don't want to make this seem like a terrible pun. But, so I apologize if this comes across as one. A silent voice truly spoke to me on a personal and emotional level. It is easily my favorite dub Technically from 2017, because that's when it was actually recorded. But now that it's eligible, I cannot give it to any other more worthy film, show, what have you. My God, where is my freaking Blu-ray? Amen. I need to see, I'll do you I one need to better. see this dub. Like, I've seen the movie, but I haven't seen the dub, so I'm like... Fuck. They have another release in January. Oh my god, do you have your fucking piggy bank? I have my piggy bank with me. <laughs> Yay! It's come full circle. I'm please so proud of you. Yeah. Did he take that please? out there? The... That was me when I did it during my recording. Now oh he's doing god. it for himself. <laughs> All right, Megan. Well, your time... your winners for dub of the year. Well, okay, so my first one's going to be heartfelt. The second one's going to be the most obvious thing to ever obvious in the state of the planet obvious. Pretty <laughs> obvious, yeah. My silver medal award for dub of the year was a toss-up between a couple of things. A silent voice was one of them. But where a silent voice spoke to Hardy in a way that moved him, I have to give my silver medal to the dub that literally drove me to tears. My silver medal goes to March Comes In Like a Lion. It is fantastic. I can't believe I've given an Onoplex best dub two years in a fucking row. Um, make your shit cheaper, bitches! Um, no. I, the Wendy Lee's direction was phenomenal. The writing was phenomenal. The acting was phenomenal. It is an emotional tour de force. I was crying by episode three. Uh, thanks, Kaylee Mills. Um, I think that the, the use of veteran talent... Uh, Ray Chase is a character- I, I think I actually viscerally got angry on the phone when Andrew told me where Ray Chase was in this show. Um, I just- Kaylee Mills, Lauren Landa, uh, uh, Xanthi Wynn, Koi Dow, uh, Zach Aguilar, um, uh, Kirk Thornton, right, Andrew? Uh, Kirk Thornton and Keith Silverstein are both in Kill Silverstein, uh, Kill Silverstein, um, who plays the oldest co- uh, sister- uh, Laura Post? Thank you. All of them just came together to make a beautiful moving show that is as cold as Akane stabbing you to as warm as Pope Go and Peep Me shining down on you. <laughs> um, but if you know me as a person, 
the greatest thing that you can... The, to me, the greatest offense you can ever do is to not be outwardly shitty, but is to disappoint me on a spiritual level. <laughs> the last time I had my hopes for a dub set so high, it burned me so badly that when I saw the subbed version of the movie of it in theaters, I cried because I heard the Seiyuu voice. I'm not joking. I was terrified that this dub was going to let me down like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers let down everybody every season. Well, yeah. At least they're not the Titans. <laughs> the ones that eat people or the ones that play football? Yes. Is there a difference? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. There was nothing in my mind that was going to beat this, this show. I am hard for KG Tang's performance. <laughs> Patrick Seitz makes me feel for a man who needs a break. I love the dub of Bungo Stray Dogs. It is, to me, the best dub that has come out this year. I was blown away from Max Middleman as the world's screechiest twink, Atashi Nakajima, to I could not believe that they got Brian Beacock to play Octagawa, mm. to Keith Silverstein as the deliciously evil Lollicon Mori. Um, I believe Colleen O'Shaughnessy has a southern accent in one season as yep. uh, the girl who writes Gone with the Wind. Yep. Uh, uh, Kyle McCarley, Steinbeck, Russian Ray Chase, Matt Greg Chu, Mercer as the Matt Scarlet Letter, Stullet yes. as Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, and just again, KG Tang as Osama Dazai, Suzanne Goldish's and Rita Magjot's uh, direction is phenomenal. The writing from Lucian, da was it Lucian and Christian? Uh, there's a couple. There's a couple other people, but Lucian, I Lucian think, is the is main, one main writer for. Both. Um, Lucian is Kenji. Uh, uh, Erica Limbeck is Doctor Asano. Todd Haberkorn is Edgar Allan Poe. Like, it's a murderer's row of California actors. Um, Johnny Bosch and Chris, uh, Cassandra Lee Morris show up as one-off characters, and by far. The greatest line of English dialogue uttered this year. You're aware, Tiger. Grow some wearballs. <laughs> David Yay! Vincent. David Vincent as uh, Odasaku. Uh, I cannot say enough nice things about this tour de force cast that at points outshines their Japanese companions. Boongo Stray Dogs is one of the most anticipated dubs I had been waiting for since Free and Free Eternal Summer. And to not be let down like I was with those two dubs makes this my best dub of the year. So with that out of the way, Megan made part of this job easy. <laughs> my silver award is Boongo Stray Dogs for itself of the year for all of those reasons that she just fucking listed. <laughs> Like, what what more do you say? You, I know. You know what more is what more is there to say? She basically just covered everything for me on that one. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you. That was the hard part. Um, because Megan and Hardy each had emotional moments tonight. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate you. Um, now it's my turn. There's something to be said when there's a show that really just hits you. I know you guys had performances that really just kind of hit you on a personal level. But there, when it comes to an entire show that can kind of just speak to you in that emotional way. And just shows... Despite it being a work of fiction and the setting and everything that it takes place in, it has its moments of emotional realism and just so much heart and heartbreak to it. That, oh, God. And Andrew remembers this very well. He was there when I started crying <laughs> during the episode when we did this one. 
I can't give my gold award for Dub of the Year to anything else but Violet Evergarden. It is such a beautifully... <laughs> it's beautifully done. It's well-written, directed, cast, and everything. And just when something like this can hit you in a place where you may not be in the most... What's the way I'm going to put this? When you are kind of in a difficult point in your life and with your family and um, he's about to come give me a hug because <laughs> this is this is just it's really hard and um, it's just everything about this dub and the show itself just really really hit me on an emotional level and I don't really know if there's much else to say like it's I find it I found it to be if you're able to hit me on an emotional level and make me start crying and not want to watch the rest of the show for a good half a day I think that's a good indication that this is the best that I've seen in the year so with that being said, I can't think of anything else. This has been a shoe win since I the day I finished the show. Andrew knows this. Amon and Noah can agree with me on this since they were there too. My dub of the year, like hands down, is Violet Evergarden because of that. All right, now that I'm good. You did good. You're I did right. Good. You did, you did good. good. Yeah. So Andrew. My wonderful support person right now. Can you can you tell me the can my you tell support us? sweater puppy? <laughs> I am her support sweater puppy. <laughs> can you tell us the um who the other hosts had for their picks for dub of the year, please? Indeed. Noah Clue's pick for best dub of the year is March comes in like a lion. It's telling that even in a show that I found too honest to bear. I can't deny the standout performance, writing, and overall pr presentation that is the epitome of what anime dubbing should be for a new generation. Jet's pick for dub of the year is Bungo Stray Dogs. While there are some other dubs this year that win over this one in specific areas, this one has the best combination of direction scripting and vocal performances out of anything else this year had to offer as somebody who was lukewarm on the show during its initial simulcast the dub made me into a fan of the series and a dub that can change my opinion on a show so strongly is a pretty easy pick for my favorite of the year roots of justice pick for dub of the year <clears throat> devil man crybaby so cue the dull surprise that Roots picked the U.S. show to take home the highest award. Dull surprise! Dull surprise! Dull surprise! But in all seriousness, I'm giving this award to Devilman Crybaby because it's a show that puts its characters through the ringer and there's no doubt that among all the languages, the series is dubbed and it likely took a toll on the actors involved and will likely stick with them through their voice acting careers. A strange and beautiful show whose dub I didn't expect to like from the trailers until the first frame hit my eyes. Say what you will about the distribution model, but with one glaring exception that may or may not be the fault of executive meddling, Netflix has stepped up their dubbing game this year. Gigi's pick for dub of the year is I Know Kusabi. This choice was extremely hard for me because so many good dubs came out this year, most notably from Sentai. But when it came down to it, I had to go with the one that gave me the most joy, the most laughter, the most gasped in shock and surprise, and for other reasons, is Ooh. it that it had to be Aino Kusabi. From the brilliant direction for something that could have been treated like a joke but wasn't, to the scripting that helped make the more ridiculously complicated plot for an OVA coherent, to the outstanding performances from everybody involved, veteran and new actors alike, I had to give this anime the big Toblerone. Thank you, Gigi. <laughs> As for me, my pick for Dub of the Year goes to March Comes in Like a Lion. 
March Comes is a beautiful, moving show, and the English dub is as moving, thought-provoking, and heartbreaking. The entire cast is full of faces, both old and new, that are giving this dub their all. There are many emotions and so many different characters and gripping performances to keep track of, and everybody is giving it 110%, making it sound fantastic. I can't wait for season two. Amon Duel's pick for Dub of the Year goes to Dragon Pilot Hisone and Masutan. This dub is hilarious, touching, weird, and oddly relatable for a show about dragons disguised as planes. Tell your friends and family who don't pay attention to anime to watch it. They'll be a fan by the end. Jamal's pick for Dub of the Year goes to Magical Girl Raising Project. The combination of strong acting, emotional script writing, and exceptional direction made this dub, this show, too good to pass up. And I cherished every minute of it. My heartfelt thanks to everybody involved. And Lack the Watcher's pick for Dub of the Year goes to Violet Evergarden. Lack speaks to me on a spiritual level, and I appreciate that. Well... Home stretch, kids. Home stretch, kids. We have one more award, and it's our final viewer's choice award. The one everyone's been waiting for. The one everyone's yes. been waiting for. So, our viewer's choice award for Dub of the Year. So, viewer's choice award, Dub of the Year, is basically the same thing as Dub of the Year for us. The only exception is uh, this is purely for any of the brand new shows that has premiered this year. Uh, c because the viewer's choice category, there is a separate one for any sequels, prequels, or reboots. Um, now, as a reminder as to your nominees for this category, we have Agretzko, Bungo Stray Dogs, Devilman Crybaby, Dragon Pilot, Hisone and Masutan, Golden Kamui, Hitorojime My Hero, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Dinoi Tese, Made in Abyss, Pop Team Epic, and SSSS Gridman. And your 2018 winner for the Viewer's Choice Award for Dub of the Year is... Before you say it's stuck, by how many votes? By one single vote... Devil Man Cry Baby. Wow. What? Wow. Yeah. Who's number two? What? Devil Man Cry Baby won out. What? He I just he's staring at the result. He's like, the fuck right now. Oh my god! I did not see that coming. No. It's I know one man who's gonna be very happy tonight. <laughs> wow. But um yeah, My boyfriend's so gonna be the end of the year victor in the viewer's choice probably it's the literally first the first first dub. Of the year. Yeah. It's great. Um yeah, so having seen Devil Man Cry Baby because Megan wouldn't shut Holy the fuck up. Shit, y'all. I, I can see why. I can see why. It's a trip. It's a trip. It's, it's it is intense. intense. It's intense. It's a lot. It's really. It was my. It was the thing when I said I was torn between two shows for my silver. Devil Man Cry Baby was the other. Yeah, it's it's very intense. It's very well produced, well cast, and well acted. It all around. It's a fantastic dub. Um, so yeah, congrats to Congr Devil Man Cry Baby for winning this award. Congratulations. Congratulations. Clearly, everyone actual loves trigger, this actual thing. content warning on Devil Man Cry Baby though. Wow, like legitimately though, thank you to everybody who voted this year. Absolutely. Oh, how, how many, many how many voted, Stephanie? Oh lord, we are we at least doubled in the vote count that we had last year alone. <laughs> Last year, thank was you like to all of something. you. Who voted. Yeah, last year was six hundred something. This year, we had over thirteen hundred people take part in the vote. So, thank you so much to everybody who took part in the Viewers Choice Awards votes, um, including any of those in the industry who may or may not have noticed that they got nominated for stuff this year. We very much appreciate all of you for taking part and spreading the word of this award show. Uh, our little weird and wacky. Award Word show, I should say. On that Sponsored note, by Dante from Devil May Cry. On that note, featuring Dante from Devil May Cry and Knuckles. 
More like <laughs> no. Devil May Cry Baby. And Chungus! Devil May Cry Baby. God damn it, Andrew. <laughs> Devil May Cry Baby. Anyway, so to kind of wrap things up, I guess 2018 I don't think has we been need a to do our final fucking vote. year. <laughs> I think we've had enough final thoughts for a day. Yeah, just everyone's qu- tired. Just quick wrapping up. 2018 has been a hell of a year. 2019, let's hope it's a good one, too. Uh, on that note, I think that means we're done for the night. It's 1 a.m. for us on the East Coast. You know where to find us. This is like the longest and biggest episode we will release all year. And yeah, like, it's our great. longest, I'm gonna be in, biggest I'm episode. Editing. I'm going to be in editing hell for the next month. Hooray for me. Mm-hmm. But thank you guys so, so much for sticking with us for like... Uh, I'm hoping three and a half hours because my recording's slowly going on four and a half. Thank you for tuning yeah, in for the entirety of this. Thank you. Did. If you yeah. if you tuned in thank for the Thank you for taking our big long one at once. I know. It's, it's been a lot of fun. This is a fun award show that we love doing every year. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for that. Uh, well, you know what? Fuck it. Let's skip promoting shit tonight. Yeah. Because it's Go late. to bed. We're all going to bed. In the words yeah. of the, in the words of Morgana... Hey, you look tired. We should go to bed. The only thing I'm going to promote is if you want to f- follow our crazy asses at Dub Talk, the best way to do it is subscribe here. And we're also on various social media like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitch, all at Dub Talk Podcast uh, for any of our weekly shenanigans that we get up to. But otherwise than that, um, because we ju- we have recorded this on New Year's Eve and is now New Year's Day. Happy New Year to everybody. This episode was so long. We were working on it last year. Er- yeah. Er- 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 Shut this episode up. is so long that you might as well donate us a Kofi because we'll need some coffee. Oh, yeah. We're, ah. I'm, I definitely need some coffee after this. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, on that note, thank you so much for joining us for the W Awards for 2018. And we will see you in a year or so. So, mm-hmm. thank you. Have a good night. And Otaku on, my friends. Keep it manly all year long. Otaku on. I love on. you, KG Tang. <laughs> Otaku on. And get hard for us in 2019. No, no, Hell yeah! And remember, we're always thinking about Hell Shake Yano. Damn it. Good night, Hell everybody. Hell, Hell Shake. shake. Hell, Hell Shake. Hell Shake. Hell Shake. Please save me. McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay. McDonald's. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Good night.